the nigga was so in his bag and he's such a dog that the nigga was like, yo, 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 leave me f real quick. Laid down, was like, mm, 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 mm. was crying like a dog and just went to sleep on a, on a corner, nigga, by his car, nigga, on the sidewalk or whatever. It was like, you don't wake up the dog when he's sleeping. Boy, we stayed out there for like five hours while I just slept and it's by us being the whole shit. And like, that was the last memory. So I look, I didn't have no producer. So I left Toronto. So being that he was your idol, when you saw that, you did, in your mind, was you like, nah, I'm not No, that no, this is DMX. He's a dog. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, this is not, he's the dog. Everybody following like, the rules. Like, you said you don't wake up the dog. And he's no, cool no, with that. They, dead ass serious said that. You do not wake up the dog when he sleep. Boy, the whole crew is the same way. We just strolled in here with all my, my peoples and my niggas. Boy, we sat out there and wait till that nigga woke up. This Smack rapper, smack. only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard, making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the wave you need to surf you heard. Told Jim I need a bomb I could drop on you niggas. Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas. I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest. I solidify my spot with gorillas. Now I'm rock with you niggas. We back. My expert opinion, the fastest growing podcast in the world, 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 world. <laughs> <laughs> we only like Shout number five, right? We, um, Are we up to number five now? The I, last I, episode. We were seven. No, I'm saying ranking because you said the fastest growing in the world. Right. Are we up to number five? I think we up to number five now. Cause so we I thought we were still at seven. seven. Before. No, I, think I thought five. we were still at seven. I think we up two slots. I think we up at five Could be, now. could be. Could I got to check it because y'all be on my head about this stuff, so I got to check it. <laughs> but we was number seven, and I believe we number five now. Shout out to the subscribers. Hit that like, hit that share. Let everybody know you in here. It don't cost you no paper unless you's a mother hater. Shout out to everybody that's been watching the show, all the new subscribers. Um, thank you. Thank yep. you. The support is overwhelming. Got my man Esso in the building. I done moved up. I got the chair next to math now. I got a promotion. You heard it's me? It's strategic. <laughs> I nigga. think I got a promotion. It, <laughs> it's strategic. We got two cameras. I know if I sit you next to this, it's only going to be one view. Bro. <laughs> I know this. It's strategic. <laughs> Mac, what up? Salute, okay. King. Respect. Shout out to everybody in the building. Chaz. Hello, homies. Everybody. Rick John, what up, bro? Billy J, what's good? Billy J in the corner. In the building. Big Wagner. What, what up, up Nick? What up, Matt? Word. Yo, y'all yeah. don't know this, but I'm like, I'm like kind of related just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, tell yeah. him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. He ain't never said that before. Nobody knew that. Nah, that, I said that mad times. So y'all probably, y'all wasn't on those episodes. That was before us. Brand new news. Brand new news. Really? Yeah. Brand yes. new news. He's never said it in no interviews. Oh, wow. Need to have you first time. That's crazy. And y'all ain't got no song Breaking together. Or not. Well, you know what? Let's start the show. My bad. It's coming soon. It is. Sean Bigger. Man of God. Man of God. Um, Heineken. We still waiting. Still Ber waiting. Berg is like, he'll be one of the first guests. He's like, he'll bring some, some oh. dots all right off the jet. We spoke before the show started. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We go back 12, what, yep. 12 13 I, years? I got a Suggestion for the name of your segment: Radioactive slime, just <laughs> slime, just <laughs> radioactive. Slime. radioactive. I think Nori slime. might call your phone. Jesus, yeah, yeah. yeah. he like, will. That's yeah. the homie though. We yeah. be, be like, like, come on, math. That's my. Right. Yo, somebody called me and said that we need to have Will Smith on, mm. and and Kevin Hart. It's a lot of requests. That's really going down right now. Yeah. I think Will Smith would be a good one too, though. I might need to train for that. HB in the building. <laughs> and Mecca. <laughs> Ain't nobody more. Word, Mac, you're going to have to sit next to me, man, because. Y'all got to stop. If you get up on me, son, I'm just saying. Come on, man. I'm just saying. Shout out to Philly, man. Y'all got to stop. Uh, shout out to Charlie Mack, too. Um, mm. Yo, we got somebody who is one of the most talented writers, producers, um, has been through the most turmoil, and you have to applaud the way he does. Just doesn't stop. 
Mm. That's facts. It's like the energizer bat on uh, um, Bunny Out. Yeah, like, he keeps going and going and going and going. More, going hits. And going more, more hits. More, more <laughs> hits. <laughs> Yo, we got hit maker in the building. Oh! oh! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the show. Uh, uh, facts. Hit maker. The god yeah. of the rebrand. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had to hit my tag because everybody be like, who's actually saying that? Do you, did you get somebody to say your tag? Like, nah, nigga, that's me. Yeah, it is. Keeping all the royalties. I respect it. Nah, well, you, you know, I always look for interesting ways to start these. Oh, man. See, I'm, a, I'm a fan, so go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm going to keep it light, though. All right, cool. When oh. did you stop giving a fuck? Mm, I think, uh, man, I ain't going to lie. Like, I kind of came in. Like, my journey, I kind of came in not giving a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because uh, a lot of the time... Like, if niggas know, like, my whole transition, I started as Iceberg, right. and I started in Chicago with, like, LEP and all these different niggas or whatever, and then right. from there, I transitioned to Youngberg. Eve actually named me Youngberg here Dude. in Quad Studios. Like, we was out here, and I went to the studio with Eve, and you, this was in an era when everybody was like, something Burgington or some, something Tin yeah, or yeah, yeah, something, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And they used to call me Young Burgington, yeah. and that's what she was shout on. Shout to Quad, we was there yeah. last night. For sure, for sure. Shout out to Junior Reed. Crazy shit coming soon. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, I mean, giving a fuck, honestly, the the switch for me as far as like from Youngberg to Hitmaker and not giving a fuck was really more so uh, when nobody was fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like shit started happening. Shit was happening to me. I was like, I'm nigga, I'm the victim in this shit. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, right. how can you turn your back on me? Because I never really faulted like all my hits, every song I had as an artist, number one. Right. Three number ones in a row. You Popping know what I'm saying? On. So wow. some shit started happening to me. And then at that point, I was just like, you know what? They don't want the product from me. And I was thinking about like uh Frank Lucas with Blue Magic and all this other shit. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, so right. I gotta figure out a way to spin this off but a lot of niggas didn't know that i was writing and producing all mm. my own records as an artist right so but at that point it wasn't like a big deal to be like man i was getting i was on ecstasy i was getting so much pussy I, like I, I was just in a in a mode like i'm 19 20 years old you know what i'm saying yeah, like it, i've been wanting this my whole life it was like an ecstasy era i'm realizing it was yeah. 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 this is just that, everybody yeah. was lit meth was in here talking about that shit. bro i ain't gonna lie you said meth like look damn to take it back i was um I was young. Uh, um, I went to LA to to the crazy shit is this is this gay dude named Joe Exclusive who was Eve a fucking um, stylist at the time. Right. He knew LEP and the street niggas from Chicago, so we all flew out to LA to meet DMX and do their showcase around us, whatever. And we went to what these bitches want from a nigga video shoot. Right. And like I got there and like I'm in. I'm. It was at the Paramount lot. Lot, excuse me, in LA. And we in there and um, I'm just chilling and like. The, the um stylist introduced me to DMX like DMX this is Iceberg blah 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 right. and he was like yo hey yo shorty uh, 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 I'm gonna go do this he <laughs> opened his hand there was a whole bunch of weed and that shit and he had yeah. like two bitches with him he right. like I'm gonna go do, do this and I'm gonna be back and he yeah. got on his trailer and he came back and they put me in um he put me in a, in a trailer and he was like oh we're not gonna ease past that he made you roll up no no he rolled up because oh. I'm 13 I'm like four foot four. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. I'm like a kid. Like, 13. so, nigga, yeah, I was like 13 years old. And he handed you a bunch old. of weed. Yeah, he handed me some weed. And then Recipe he, oh, and he, and he right. showed me his weed, too. Right. So, and I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was getting booted up then. Like, I was smoking, drinking the whole okay. vibe so at 13. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So, the nigga put me on the trailer. And he was like, um, yo, spit something for me. And I was like... I stick on up in the fit with the tent, smoke a film to the hemp, y'all better repent because you fall my beretta get sent. I'm in the raw, like on some twister type shit, right? You remember and, it. Yeah, the, that's the exact rhyme that I spit for him or whatever. And he was like, hey, yo, shorty, I don't know what the fuck you just said. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. So he like, slow it down for me. Like, give me another one. And I was like, uh, fuck the law, just bubble up and cut the raw. And when a tray cocked back, it a bust your jaw. Flooded uh -huh. my wrist. I'm sipping on a bucket of crisp. These nuggets, they glist. The same niggas thuck it, they bitch. So like, I was like a, a little young nigga, like spitting that type of shit. And the whole trailer went crazy. Ah! Yeah. After that, he was like, shorty, I'm going to sign you. It's not gonna be fast, but I'm sorry. you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, damn, you gotta think, like, I was a kid, so 
this is the year that he dropped the two albums in the same year. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, I just asked my dad to buy me flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood for Christmas, and now I'm in front of this nigga, yeah, you know wow. what I'm saying, rapping for him. So bring it all the way back home to Met the Man. It's the craziest thing ever. This how circle, like the stories come full circle. They put me in a car, like X was like, yo, show shorty, we leaving. We finna go to the show. We're going to Brandy's show. I'm like, oh, okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Yeah. They put me in a car. X was driving, met the man was in the front mm. seat, Ali was in the back seat, and I was in the back seat with Ali. And I'm talking about this nigga, X swung down a 405 Oops. like a fucking madman, nigga, swinging, swerving. Met the man was so high, he was in a motherfucking car like this in the front seat, smoking like this was normal to them. Right. And that was the first time me meeting Brandy, me meeting Ray J, but I was like literally like a kid, kid bro. Yeah. And that's, that's crazy, yo, for real, wow. for real. How does a 13-year-old okay. end up in front of DMX? So, look, this is, like, the most outrageous. Like, my story is might be the most, like, I'm working on my doc now. Like, my story is one yeah. of the craziest stories ever. So, I come from, my background, my parents are millionaires. Like, I ain't never ate a hamburger, hot dog, grilled cheese, nothing in between two pieces of bread. I've, never had a I've, been, I've ever had, I've never, <laughs> I've never, like, McDonald's, uh, anything like that. Like, niggas yeah. literally had, like, chefs, like, yo, know, like, you get what you want type shit. You know wow. what I'm saying? So, I fell in love with music because Shauna from Disturbing the Peace was my next door neighbor. A lot Ooh, of people. Shout pe- out to Shauna. Yeah, a lot of people don't know it. Her dad her is dad, buttoned her out. Her dad, yeah. yeah. And they've been filthy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? From the jump. They were the first people I've ever seen with the Ray J move, the indoor pool, outdoor pool move. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Did so, you see what she posted today? I'm, that's my sister, my brother. Oh, I'm on for Yeah. <laughs> so she. Oh, I became, she been racked up. <laughs> Mm. Now, now, come on. Bro, come on. Come on. <laughs> radioactive. Oh, radioactive. Oh, radioactive. Please, come on, go. <laughs> you know me. Right. Right. I, I know him. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Shauna, um, it kind of like inspired me, and I fell in love with music. I fell in love with rap. And, like, instead of like taking the path of being like the kid that was like, 16 with a permit and a Range Rover. I was the kid that ran away from my 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 house and I was in the streets like spitting crack rocks out my mouth selling serving the junkies or whatever cuz like this is the era when you really had to live your raps, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I I was the biggest drug dealer and shoot 'em up bang bang nigga in my raps. So that led me to go to the streets and that led me to meet my mentor Bugs who's right hand with Kanye. That led me to meet No ID. That led me to meet Kanye. That led me to meet Ice Drake. All these niggas that are like the good guys in Chicago, and from there, like some street niggas, LEP, shout out to them, you know what I'm saying? Like, they end up taking me around, and they had, they were the biggest street niggas in the game, they, and, wow. and shit, they intro me like that. Wow. So, when, so, you young Berg, right? Uh huh. When? Right. At that moment? Yeah, no, or no. right now? What's the He's transition? Iceberg. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, wait, 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 wait. Parents millionaires. And you, how, how did you make the decision to go sell drugs? Man, I was I was bad, bro. Like I was getting kicked out of school. Like I was rebellious. Like the, the hip hop shit. Like you gotta think this is DMX. This is early Jay Z. This shit had a hold on me. This is the locks. This rough riders. Right. Like this shit. Like it it just into my spirit. Like and I always I never loved school. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I dropped out of school in ninth grade. Like for real, for real. Like I don't got no GD. I don't got none of that shit or whatever. Like I just love music. Like I I just dialed into music immediately and from like 12 to to now is my music has been my entire life wow you made that decision early yeah and it paid off hell yeah, yeah was she the that. one bringing you around did um, she did she like early, I, I hear the street life but where did, where she, did the intro to see oh, hold on i want to go a little bit deeper into the okay, street okay 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 of course you do your first time <laughs> selling crack <laughs> right how did it happen I used to be on 70th and Winchester. Uh, shout out to Blue. Shout out to everybody that was in that section or whatever. And um, shit, like, I just seen, do, I'm just following what my niggas is doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, niggas is getting money. Shout out to Elo. Like, it, I, was, I was actually staying in a house with my niggas or whatever. Like, I ran away. Like, I mm. ran, my parents never wanted me to do music. Like, you got to think, like, for them to be so up and so high up, they never wanted me to do music. They never, like, they wanted me to be in school. They wanted me to be narrow, straight narrow. You know right. what I'm saying? But I was like, man, fuck that shit. And we were living in the suburbs, so I just transitioned and moved and ran away from home and went to the inner city. Did your homies know that your parents was millionaires? Yeah, everybody knew. Who it, gave you the pack? I bought it on my own because my parents were millionaires. 
They never tried to kidnap you and hold you for no, ransom. But my question is, how did you get to the hood? Like, y'all selling, talking about the crack. Okay, so look, look. How, how did you get, you out there with no, the no, no, man? How no, did you this, get there? This, this is what you got to understand, okay. and I'm sure that everybody, like, just be, like, my parents ain't no square SpongeBob niggas. You know okay, what I'm saying? They you. just made a better way for me, you know right. what I'm saying, in my early life. And they from the hood. Like, my parents is from the hood, but it just so happened my dad became the director of child public schools, you know what I'm saying, in Chicago. He owned hella real estate. He put my mom on. My mom became like a mogul with like child care centers and stuff like that or whatever. So they from the hood. But right. by the time that I was born, they was already up. You know what I'm saying? So like they made it through. It was really a, the American dream. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I just landed, you know what I'm saying, into this shit. Wow. Buck, you, your parents ran child care centers mm -hmm. and their son runs to the hood to sell so drugs after they already made <laughs> like it. Like it was so, it's, it was so crazy to the point that like I remember back in the day like when my mom like had all our child care centers, like you know how like so so deaf got had the, the billboard in Atlanta like where it's like you get off the plane in Atlanta like we had billboards all over the city and like my face was on it and I was the guy like from the child care centers or whatever and it just mm -hmm. evolved into me like being going on some street shit. Well, yeah. that, that goes to show, like, you know, as much as parents would like to have a control on what their kids do, mm -hmm. bruh, they, they're going to make their own decisions. And you made your own decision. And you want to know what's so fucked up? Now that I'm, like, uh, this conversation really done inspired it and, like, maybe say it, like, man, like, that's why I don't really judge the kids right now, you know what I'm saying, with right. this drilling shit and all that other shit. Like, music made me want to go sell crack, nigga and sell drugs because I was so influenced by the music and it was nothing but, you know what I'm saying, that era, you know what I'm saying, right. that golden era, that early, late 90s, early 2000s era, you know what I'm saying, the music that I grew up on, it was like, yo, if you wasn't selling crack, you wasn't on shit. You mm -hmm. wasn't that. So the music influenced me. So as much as I look, like, I feel, I feel bad for it, you know, because where the kids is, like, I, I'm a reflection of that shit too. Like when you hear niggas talking about spin a block, do this, blah, 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 blah. It kind of poison you. Like it's just that we in a bad era of this shit right now. Like y'all can't tell me that when Jeezy was G when, in his heyday, every dope boy wanted to get in the car and go make a play to some young Jeezy. Back, back. Even if it was a dime bag, nigga, to a fucking brick, That's nigga, you fact. felt like you was moving like that. True hmm. story. The night that I listened to Thug Motivation 101. Mm -hmm. I woke up in a crack spot. How'd you end up in a crack spot? Oh. Wow. Oh. oh you remember shit. that? Oh, shit. He's looking away. Crazy. Looking How'd away. you end up in a crack spot, though? Bro, it just, it was just the course, course of the night. No, 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 the same, no, 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 no. Way, he ended, the the same album, way he ended up with cracks And then in his I ended mouth. up in a crack. But, but I mean, not to, say, is, not to say I wasn't like, well, music I, and I, shit I, like I, that. I went but, to, yeah. But my I, niggas just, you know what I mean? Like 50 Cent. Was my theme music to a lot Got of bullshit you. that I was doing. True. You know what I mean? And niggas be twirling. Did your parents not not say forgive you, but like as you attain all this success, what was their energy? Did they feel like, damn, even though you're successful, you kind of like really fucked us up? We should have trusted. I you. wasn't successful yet. So mm -hmm. when I meet DMX or whatever, this is mm -hmm. what happens. I get to deal with DMX. So this or whatever, I'm telling the craziest story since we here and like yeah, I'm gonna right. give y'all the whole truth. So I was signed to the niggas, right? That was that was um in Chicago, LEP. LEP. Right. And um it was a nigga that was like the, the main nigga, the CEO of this shit on some Suge Knight shit or whatever, but he had the bag so fucking um Man, I ain't gonna lie, like we had offers from everybody. Like I had an offer from Rockefeller, I had an offer from DMX, I had an offer from Tommy Boy. This is when Tommy Boy still existed. I ain't gonna lie, like when Tommy Boy and Tom Silverman and all them was in there, like we acted like I wasn't an artist and they because it was a conglomerate of us and everybody went performed. And like when my song came on last, I got on my back and slid under the all the, the white lady chair and all the other shit and came up from under her chair rapping or whatever. Like they offered us the big bag. So wow. every but it was through that company. But DMX didn't want to fuck with them. Right. He just wanted me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, right. shorty, fuck, fuck them niggas. Like, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, it's me and you. Right. So um, when I got back to Chicago after the bidding war and like after Hove and everybody wanted to be involved with me and shit, um, like this nigga got on some real sugar nice shit. Like, and he was on some like this is a real life story. So this we is get it, the X. This, this is why, no, no, LEP. This is why I go back to Chicago now right. while they doing that, and I'm still a kid. So, like, the, the CEO of the company, 
We in the studio, he go in the studio and he get in the booth like, shorty, your mama a bitch, and I uh, fucking da 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 da, and bust nuts in her face, and this, that, and the third of my mind. I'm like, yo, this shit mad weird. So I go in the booth after him and like, this nigga mad DMX wanna sign me, something, something, blah, blah, blah. Like, it was like we was battling each other. Yeah. But in that, like, when I come out the booth, the nigga like, threw me over this shit, like on some Suge Knight shit or whatever, yeah. and like, pushed me in a room, like, I own you, nigga. Write. Write a rap. And I'm like, what? Boom, boom. Nigga start beating me up as a kid. You know what uh, I'm saying? And yeah. like the, the guys, like Bugs and all the people I work with, they kick in the door and they like get them off me. And that's how I got out of my contract with LEP. Because wow. they put hands on me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the nigga, and I was a kid. So how old were you when this happened? It's like 13. 14, 13, 13, 13, 13 yeah. 14. So, wow. so what, was he doing this because he felt like you were going to leave and yeah, go Yeah, he felt ex. like I was his son. So you know when you, when you see, like, now that I'm older, like, and I've made people dreams come true and seen shit come to fruition, he really felt like he was, like, my... Baby yeah, and little way. Yeah, yeah, baby, yeah, exactly. Right. So, like, even to the point prior to that, when they, when Eve named me Young Berg or whatever, we were in quad, like I was saying earlier, and, like, DMX pulled up the quad. He heard I was in New York. Like, Eve had told him. So he, like... X was like, the X on the way up here. And I was with the niggas. And they pulled me in the bathroom. They like, nigga, I'm going to kill your mom and your daddy. You act like you want to fuck with this nigga. And I was like, what? what? And I was a kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, this was a real, like. You ain't believe it, though. Hell yeah, 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 yeah. What you talking yeah. about? These niggas were official. It. Like, right. they the reason I had yes. anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. I was just like, yeah. damn, like, I was thrown off by that whole shit or whatever. But. You know, he lost his bearings, and once he ended up doing that whole little incident after the fact, putting hands on me or whatever, um, I went back, told my parents, and then I went and signed my first record deal with DMX. I signed a bloodline. They gave me like 500000 um, like damn that 100 grand in my pocket. X I knew about the bullshit that happened with the guys, so X right. moved me to Edgewater, New Jersey, right. and I lived out there or whatever, and the nigga what, get... So what happened when you told your parents? Um... I told my dad, I was really, like, at that point, like, my parents had divorced. Mm -hmm. So my dad became, like, my best friend and, like, my manager. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. somebody, my business man, whatever, just in my corner type shit. Right. And my dad was like, he's just a real nigga. Like, oh, you got some money coming in from this shit? Like, even though your mama don't want you to do it, fuck it. I'm going a, I'm to a let you go do this shit. You know what I'm saying? No, so, when you told your dad what happened between... Oh, no, it was who? up. It was, it was, it was it smoke. Was you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my, my brother burnt down their buildings. They tried to kill what? my brother behind this shit. Like, this is a real, like, movie story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all this shit went bad behind this shit. Wow. So, what um, network is trying to get your life story? Hulu oh, or Netflix? Nah, it's a, it, it's it's a few in yeah. <laughs> My dog called me. It's a few in L. You know all what I'm right. saying? Like, right. this whole story is it's finna go crazy. But, yeah, um, yeah so that happened. And then shit, like I said, I, I ended up moving to Edgewater, New Jersey, and DMX gave me a dog, and that was it. What would you name the dog? I don't even remember what the dog name was, because the nigga just was like, hey, yo, shorty, uh, I think his dog, you know Boomer, the, the, the yeah, tattoo yeah, that yeah, was yeah. back? He, his dog had babies. So like I was living at his his man's crib at first, Butler, who was close to DMX now, or whatever. Boomer passed away. This had to be another dog. No, no, no. This well, I guess I don't know. This is something in the bloodline or whatever from you know, because yeah. he could name the record label Bloodline. So oh. I don't know if it was from the same bloodline of dogs, mm. but he gave me like the the baby from, you know what I'm saying, yeah. one of his dogs or whatever. Oh. And he was like, yo, shorty, uh, I wanna ever see you without a dog. Like, take the dog everywhere. The dog's a dog. I'm like, all right, nigga, like, <laughs> what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, even early today, <laughs> I'm riding with, with, my, with my business partner, Billy J, early, and I'm like, damn, that's the old Def Jam building right there, the Universal building that used yeah. to be, like, off 8th Ave or whatever. Yeah, I'm like, oh, 50th. shit. 50th and 8th, bro, that nigga, I used to have a dog in that bitch, bro. Like, I'm talking about a dog be shitting in front bro, of Leo why? office. DMX was so lit, nigga, they would say nothing to me, bro. And I used to go to Def Jam. I used to be with Murder, Inc., with John and them. I used to shoot dice with them niggas all day, smoke blunts with them niggas. My weed man would pull up with yeah. me. That's when they had them glass jars with the weed inside Guess of it. Guess the weed little, man was? Uh, Hakeem. Yep, Hakeem. Hakeem was light the weed man. Boy with the yeah. freckles or whatever. Oh, yeah. He used to deliver all the weed, weed to us or whatever. And I used to just get drunk and high in the studio. I mean, excuse me, in the office and just go up. Def I remember Jam Jazz Young. How all old, these different, how old were you at 13, this? bro. 
Def Jam was a party up in there. We used to have mad, mad mm -hmm. fucking fun in there. They didn't stop you from smoking. Yep. If, the, if the security came while we were smoking, Leo would be like, get the fuck out of there. They making all the money downstairs. Yep. Let them smoke. Kevin Lyles never said anything. Let yet. them niggas. Them mm -hmm. niggas making money. You let them niggas smoke. They let Murder Inc., Rockefeller, Bloodline, whoever. Y'all niggas could do whatever, nigga. You come in there, it was bitches in there. It was a party in there. Yeah. Niggas woke up every yeah. day with like, I'm coming to the label. Nah, it was like that because yeah. it was like Rock, Murder Inc., Bloodline, and then Rough Riders. Rough Riders. Riders. Yeah. And I just think that niggas just used to be like, man, we going to Def Jam Builder. Like, it's up. Like, it's that up, shit bro. was up. It was headquarters, mm -hmm. literally. It was crazy, yo. Shout out to Jazz Young. Jazz yeah, was there. that's my OG. Um, um, that's my um, big sister. Shaka started out there. I hope Shaka. Shaka's doing well. Shaka was doing radio back then. That was before he bought Luda yeah, in. Yeah, for sure. Hell Remember? Because yeah. he, he worked Luda's record, and that's how Luda came and, and got the deal with Def Jam. It was crazy. Yeah, I remember them moments, like yesterday. Yeah. You never put out anything on Bloodline. Yeah, I did. Um, did you? Yo, so that's what the shit that went viral. I think uh, probably like four or five years ago, like I was promoting one of my singles when I was uh, working with Atlantic, and I went and did an interview with Complex or whatever, and I told them how DMX stole my first piece of pussy. Uh, have y'all heard that story? No. Nah. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I remember pieces of this story. Yeah. So the, run, run it back. Give, give us more details, so more ignorance. So I was a virgin at the time, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, um, I, you know, like, well, man. <laughs> so DMX brought You're me to team, right? Yeah, like okay. so, so DMX brought me to Toronto, Canada. He was shooting a movie Exit Wounds with Steven Seagal or whatever, and we were up there. And I'm talking about they was treating DMX like the mayor of Canada. Like I never seen no shit like this. Like when we did the song Do You, it was on Funk Master Flex album. Irv Gotti. It's my first time meeting Irv Gotti too. He came to Toronto or whatever. He produced the record and mm -hmm. fucking like this nigga X had like the illest shit going on. Like. We had police escorts. The police go back to the hotel and grab two pounds of weed for X, bring it to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was up there. He was living crazy. So yeah. we went to the club one night, and um, it's my first time really in a club. But, you know, like, I was playing a different level than X because, you know, X love to play pool. So, like, everybody was surrounding him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a part of the entourage. They took me upstairs and had me just in a little vibe or whatever. So I ended up meeting a little chick, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm in there, and it's time for everybody to go. You know, they following out with X. I'm grabbing, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Come with yeah. me. I get in the car, it's my first time finger fucking a girl, you know what I'm saying? Scratch and sniff, smell what the pussy like. I'm like, yeah, it's going down. How we, old is this chick? Oh, I don't know. Way older than me. She was in a club. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm sure it wasn't you know no 18 so, order so, club that DMX is so, in. You know on, what I'm so, saying? So, 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 how did you get to the finger pop? Because we in the back seat of the whip now. You know, I'm a part right. of the entourage. I'm a young boy, so like I pulled her in and then she whipped me and we in the back seat. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. grabbing titties, you know what I'm saying? Grabbing ass, kissing on it. You was know you what I'm saying? Nah, I was loaded. I told you I was already on the liquor. I was already on the weed. The whole <laughs> shit, bro. Like, it was right. a whole movie. Like, it's still your first time? I was little DMX, bro. You got to understand, like, I was yeah. DMX's protege. It wasn't like, like, I was the little dog, you know? Right. So, to me, it was kind of like, whatever, you know it's what I'm saying? It was my time. Things. Right. Yeah, and fucking, I'll never forget, we were staying at the Sutton Place Hotel. I don't know if that shit still exists in uh, Canada and Toronto now. We get back there. Me and DMX, we on the penthouse floor. Like, he put me in a room right next to him or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, how you get to the, the penthouse floor and, like, the, the big room got the double doors that's all the yeah. way at the end of the hallway. Well, my room right next to his. Yeah. So, he, you know, when you get to the hotel, the artist goes up first with the security and the entourage. Wait, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let him get settled. So, I get up there and um, the nigga X wasn't even around me. Like, X was in his room already. Like, I might have waited, like, 15 minutes. Like, I might have smoked a cigarette, you know what I'm saying? Like, wild out in front of the hotel with the bitch. And um, I get to my room, and I'm literally, like, putting a key card in my room. And nigga, X door swing over. Yeah. I'm like, he like, yo, 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 Jordan, you good? I'm like, yeah. He like, hey, yo, uh, hey, yo, ma. I think you, love, think you love your purse in my room. Now, mind you, we met these bitches at the club. <laughs> <laughs> they, she never been to his room. They never been to the hotel or nothing. And she was like, I think I did. <laughs> She's scum, <laughs> yo. She made a beeline around me. He, he looked at me like, shorty, shorty, I'll tell you later. Shorty, don't worry about it. Yeah. Closed the door and took my first piece of pussy. She ever found her purse? <laughs> what stopped you from saying, 
No, she didn't. <laughs> Nigga was my idol, bro. Yeah. I just told you I had my dad buy me flesh and my flesh blood and my blood for, for Christmas. Wow. Like, that was on my Christmas, Christmas list, list of gift. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I want this CD. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this must have been amazing for you to go from listening to this music to being in the mix, the mix of it. It happened and fast. Being, fast. And being, like, like, uh, uh, like, like taken in by the hottest artists in the world at the time. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, my demo was so fire. Like, Bugs, No ID, and Kanye West did my demo. Like, I was rapping on the Jesus Walks beat on my demo before it became Jesus Walks with Kanye. So you hmm. motivated Kanye to do Jesus No, Walks? I did not. That's okay. a, that, nah, we not nah, running nah, with that. Nah, just nah, nah, I was a nah, young boy, nah, but you know how nah. back in the day niggas had beat CDs or whatever, and, yeah, my, yeah. And, my, and my mentor, Bugs, happened to have a bunch of beat CDs with all Kanye beats, so it was the, the beat for Jesus Walks was on my demo, and then Talib Kweli, his first collaboration with Kanye, it was like, Wanna Be Good to You or something like that. That beat was on my demo. Like, I had all heat from no idea. Like, I was rapping over all these different beats, and that's how I kind of got Kanye, I rapped on two Kanye beats. Nah, for sure. Shout out to Ye. Them Ye beats be making it around, boy. This is when Free was managing him. So did did Ye take a likeness to you because because you was from from a Chicago? Or yeah, you never of course. Even knew about of it? course. Like you know what I'm saying. Like he knew what the vibes was. And then I ain't gonna lie. When I got my deal with DMX. I actually had a session with Ye, and like Ye came to my session, played me a bunch of shit, gave me new beats, gave me new vibes or whatever. But I think it was a weird time for Ye, cause like this is before Ye got on as a as a rapper, you know what I'm right. saying, trying to find his way. And then me not working with LEP and them no more, my mentor Bugs, who taught me how to be a producer, was still with them. So like I was like a fish out of water myself. Like, you know, I just got a record deal and I'm just a rap rapper. I'm used to my producer telling me this beat. Yo, what you just said right there, that's the hook. Let's do this, whatever. Or let's throw bars together for the hook. And right. yo, short, you know what I'm saying? Just so a mentor in the studio. Yeah, so I was just no DMX in the studio, no nothing, just having a budget with 500 grand and just, you know what I'm saying, vibed out. You know what I'm saying? Studio time, trying to figure it out, but no type real direction, you know? Amazing, bro. Like, how? I mean, they was giving a lot of money away back then, man. A lot of people was getting deals. They was getting publishing deals with no placements. I got big draws, a, a fucking publishing deal for like five hundred grand, and we had prospective placements, and we didn't even get nothing placed until fucking Destiny Child, like two years <laughs> later. It's crazy. Real Not shit. And you and you could be there, living yeah. off of money back then, off the perspective. He's gonna be a star. I'll give him two million dollars. I'm gonna be. I'm not even gonna take that much credit for it. I think that DMX was that hot back then that when he did his label deal for Bloodline, it was already etched in stone. Like how I do my label deal right now, whatever. I know that my artist is gonna get this advance. This it's already laid right. out. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can sign these many artists with this type of you know what I'm saying funding. This overhead. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. it's laid out in your contract when you do your label deal. So I think that was just the the, you the just fucking fortunate. blessing of just being right. with, around what, DMX. What you learning the business at this time? Fuck also? no. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you I was getting drunk, drinking tequila, nigga, with a dog and smoking blunts and cigarettes everywhere. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was little DMX. Yo, what, yo, this is crazy. I, I mean, shit. Son. So when you came out of Bloodline, what was next? No, 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 no. How did you come out of Bloodline? Oh, shit. So, like, damn. So I remember my last great experiences with X. Uh, we was in Toronto. And like, uh, I this I never seen a nigga do this. This nigga X, we was in a studio session. He drank two fifths of Remy Grand Cru, like by himself, two fifths, like in a one studio session. And we left out. Um, um, shout out to, to Shira. I just spoke to her recently or whatever. We left out with his wife, with the gang or whatever. And like niggas left his keys in the, to his car, to his bands that he had inside the studio. The nigga was so in his bag, and he's such a dog that the nigga was like, yo, 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 leave me the fuck alone real quick. Nigga laid down, was like, mm, 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 mm. was crying like a dog, nigga, and just went to sleep, nigga, on a, on a corner, nigga, by his car, nigga, on the sidewalk or whatever. And niggas was like, you don't wake up the dog when he's sleeping. Boy, we stayed out there for like five hours while that nigga just slept and it's by his bands, nigga, the whole shit. And like, that was the last memory, so I looked. I didn't have no producer, so I left Toronto. So being that he was your idol, when you saw that, you did, in your mind, was you like, 
Nah, I'm not no, doing that shit. no. This is DMX. He's a dog, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Like this is not. He's the dog. Everybody following like, the rules. Like, you said you don't wake up the dog, and he's no, cool no, with that. They, dead ass serious said that you do not wake up the dog when he sleep. Boy, the whole crew, nigga. The same way we just strolled in here with all my my peoples and my niggas. Boy, we sat out there and wait till that nigga woke up. <laughs> Ain't nobody leave, nigga. It was I right never there. heard. That's right. crazy. R rest in peace to X. Nah, hell yeah. Given that we know the history uh, now of, of like the drug abuse and uh -huh. all that stuff, I never knew. You never saw. Never it. seen it. He never. He never did it in front of you. Liquor and weed. You know he used to have his blood. He called it blood. This back when niggas uh, was still drinking Alize. He would drink. He would mix the Remy with the Alize and, and, and a water bottle and call that shit blood. Mm. And that's like you know what I'm saying how I went. So from there I go back to um, Edgewater, New Jersey. And um, I was just lost in the sauce, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love music, but I didn't have a producer. I was just a rapper at the time. You know what I'm saying? And taking up out of that, like, uh, and then also to sprinkle it in, like I did, if y'all wanna go check it out while y'all watching, it's um, called Dog for Life. Me featuring DMX, it was on the Exit Wound soundtrack. Right. We did that while we was in Toronto or whatever. And um, like, y'all go listen to that shit, because I sound like a fucking chipmunk on that shit. Like, I yeah. sound like a kid, like, for real, for real. So, um... Did the label get dropped, or...? No, 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 look, I'm gonna tell you. So, I go back to Chicago, back to LEP, to all the niggas that I went through all that bullshit with, because my mentor, Bugs, was the producer. And I couldn't really make music without him, so I... I swallowed the bullet like, man, yo, nigga, we went through our trial and tribulation. You know, niggas gonna fight regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm from Chicago. Like, you know what I'm saying? I done yeah. seen niggas throw hands and break a nigga's jaw and be friend with a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. After the fact. But I was thinking for my career. Like, I, I knew it clicked to me. Like, this ain't going far without me having no producer or somebody to show me how to do my shit. Right. So I went back to work with um, Bugs. It's in the era of two-way pages. Scott, Scott Till, I had that shit. And I went back and my mom and them got word that I went back or whatever and I was back in Chicago. So uh, my mom was always very fearful for me, you know what I'm saying, overprotective. And um, one day I'm yeah, you in- you must have gave her like 80 heart attacks. Word. I'm sure, and I love my mom to this day. We All this shit, we not even close. Like all the, I'm, I'm Even to, to this day? No, yes, no, I don't have a real relationship with my mother at all. Even with your success? Yeah, I'm gonna, wow. keep, I'm gonna keep telling y'all this shit. So yeah. from there, I'm at the studio with LEP and all them. And my mom is blowing up my pager, hit me, hit me like, yo, I want to see you. Let's go to Red Lobster. This is back when Red Lobster was a thing. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it was like, yo, like, right. Right, let's go. So I'm like, nah, I don't want to go to Red Lobster, but I'm about to go back to my crib in New Jersey. You could take me to the mall because I want to buy some stuff for myself because I had the bag. Like, I had right. a couple dollars. So she come pick me up from the studio with L.E.P. and them niggas. And uh, the studio used to be on 72nd and Halston in Chicago. And uh, we ride and we go into the, to the mall and my mom getting all these mysterious phone calls. Hello? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be parked by the Walgreens on this, that, and that. And I'm like, who are you talking to? And um, she's like, no, I just got remarried. I'm talking to my new husband. But mind you, I lived in Jersey. She got remarried. I didn't know the nigga or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So I just took it for what it was worth. I go in the stores, buy my clothes. I come out. And like she had a little BMW at the time, and like two big Samoan niggas is about a BMW. So they like, uh, she like, Chris, meet them. And um, he like, yeah, what's up, Chris? How you doing? Da, da, da. We hear you do music. And I'm like, yeah, you know, nigga, I'm Iceberg. What's up, nigga? You know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. They like, she like, Chris, you gotta go to school. She go jump in her car, lock the door, nigga, pop the trunk. Motherfucker, this bag's packed and all type of shit or whatever. Now I'm fighting in the middle of the parking lot with the Samoa niggas. They pulling the bags out the trunk or whatever, throwing them in another bag. They throw like the plastic cuffs on me, nigga. My mom skirt off like, skirt! And now I'm in the back of a fucking car with two Samoa niggas I never met in my life, nigga, and they just driving me somewhere. So now I'm cuffed up. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But, but to your understanding, who were they? I don't know these niggas. I don't but, know but, nothing. But, uh, were they truant? See, no, were they well, no were they? I don't know. I just walked just... out the mall and met two niggas. So from there, we ride in. We get to like downtown Chicago. So I'm thinking like maybe she put me in like a boarding school. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think. Well, I don't know what's going on. Downtown Chicago. Now, damn, we at O'Hare Airport. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So we going through that. We going through TSA. So mind you, like the two big Samoan dudes got their hands on me and while, they, while I'm going through TSA. I get through TSA and it's a black lady there. And she's like, why you got your hands on that boy like that? I'm like, I don't know these niggas. Snatch away, run. I run into a dead end on some bullshit. 
So at that point, I'm just like, man, fuck airport. it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They had all the paperwork or whatever. So my mom assigned all her parental rights away to like some crazy boarding school, like concentration camp shit. So from there, I flew from Chicago to Las Vegas. On a flight from Las Vegas, they gave me the letter and I opened it up and it was my mom basically saying like, yo, you're now a product of this little concentration school shit. I don't have nothing to do with it. Blah, blah, blah. You in these people's hands now. I get there. I fly to um, Spokane, Washington, and from mm. there they drive me to Thompson Falls, Montana, and what I'm in this hell? fucking concentration camp type shit. You know what I'm saying? And like where they cut me off from the world. No TV, no radio, no nothing. They were paying five grand a month for me to stay there, and like it's a bunch of kids. When you say that your pops was in on this? My pops was, wasn't fuck with me because I ran away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I ain't give them nothing to fight against. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like nigga, you ain't you ain't put me on in no game. So shit, your mama want to do this, nigga. It is what it is, nigga. You you, you did that. Right. So now I'm in this concentration camp type shit and fucking um, it's kind of like. You couldn't look at girls. Like, they start you all at level one. So when you come in at level one, and this is how they played me, too. Like, they did a whole group assembly when I got to the shit. And they like, yeah, we hear you're a rapper. I'm like, yeah, you know, I rap. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm signing DMX. So they got all the whole facility there. And they like, yo, you're a level one. We're going to make you a level two if you go jump in this swamp infested water right now with this alligator. And da 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 I'm like, what the fuck? So I, when you level one, you don't got no salt, no pepper. Like... Every, they strip you from everything. You already can't watch TV. You can't listen to me. They cut you off from the whole world. So, like, I went in there, jumped in a the pond. They, like, screamed for, like, a, a, a 30 seconds. Ah! I'm screaming in that shit. They removed the whole fucking facility away from that shit and pulled me out of that. Like, you're nothing here. We don't give a fuck about you being famous and this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. Took me to the shit. I was acting up there. Like, so when you act up there, they send you to some shit called worksheets to where you just sit and stare at a wall for six hours and you can't eat nothing or whatever. You can't, they strip you of all the food or whatever. When you fuck up there, they send you to some shit called The Hobbit. And The Hobbit is just like a, a blank fucking bed of just wood. They feed you three meals a day. The first meal is a bagel. The second meal is a piece of bread with a cheese on it. And third meal is a lima bean burrito. You fuck up at The Hobbit, they send you to Jamaica. It's called High Impact, which I actually had Jamaica my, the country? Yes, which I had a pleasure to visit because I was fucking up everywhere. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And um, I had to walk with a 100-pound brick on my back for 100 laps. 100, like The lap was a mile to get, get sent back to where I was. All right, during this time, who are you in contact with? Nobody, nigga. They cut me off in the world. I ain't know 9-11 happened. I ain't know Aaliyah died. I ain't know nothing, nigga. Yo. Oh, God. So, like, why you in this concentration camp? And y'all could pull this shit up. It was called Spring Creek Academy. If you Google it now, they got all type of fucking child molestation. Rape. They had to shut the shit down. Like, nigga, the feds came to shut this shit down. Like, this is like some movie type shit. But like, they, they never got you. Hell no. Nah. So I'm in that shit. You never know everything. I was cut off from the world. So I couldn't talk to my parents until I worked my way up to a certain level. I couldn't do this, that, and the third. You get there and there's some 10-year-old nigga that been in the fucking camp since he was seven that's a higher level. You like, pussy, sit up, 50 push-ups. And I'm like, get your little lame ass away. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it sets you up to act out and meanwhile while you acting out your parents are in a seminar as well where they have other people that have kids from the camp where their moms and dads are like basically telling them this is the best thing you ever did for your child like mm. blah, blah blah so they paying all this money monthly it was a lot of us in that shit you know what i'm saying um and out the blue like i ain't gonna lie my dad just came and got me on some shit like man like fuck that like you know what i'm saying kind of went against my mom like you know what i'm saying because these people were doing people dirty, like you'll be in this program for so long. And like when you turn 18, you get out the program, but your exit plan could be like $50 in a bus ticket. And, just, and that's just it, nigga. And you just there. Yeah, I ain't know 9 11 happened. I ain't know nothing. I was what, cut was off from like the whole world. Was it like school or anything in that shit? I don't know, schoolish. Yeah, schoolish. So, yeah. From what How year long were you there? Year? Yeah. yeah. I was there for like almost a year. I was there for like. 10 months and my dad came and got me like I'll never forget it he came and got me and this shit like a movie he took me to like Target or Best Buy or some shit like that or whatever I bought uh, Nas uh, I bought the Blueprint and I bought Nas album I, I forget well 
got yourself a gun, whatever mm. Nas album that yeah. was, or whatever, yeah. with one mic yeah. and still all that still matter. Still matter. Awesome. I bought them. And I didn't know Aaliyah died. Remember, I met, was with DMX, nigga. Aaliyah so tatted on the back of like, my neck. Yeah, like, yo, what? I, Hold I, on, you I was there. Aaliyah, this Toronto, is Jay-Z. <laughs> when they were shooting. The ethers on that Aaliyah shit. was at the What These Bitches Want from a nigga video shoot. She was one of the nicest women I ever met in my life. She was there with X, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I didn't know none of this shit had happened. And like, I just went from having a record deal to be stripped from all that shit. And my dad came and got me. And that's kind of how I like left that. And that's how I lost my deal with DMX. Is this, is this the reason that you and your mother don't have a good relationship? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's a layer of the cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, was there any appreciation for that? On my end? Yeah. Now being an adult, looking back. Being, being 13. Yeah. yeah. Drinking, smoking, all over the, you know what I mean? You like for, for a parent, yeah. for a parent, that's a nightmare, yeah. bro. That's Looking like, back on perspective, she might have, you know, saved my life indirectly because of the people that I was around. You right. were rolling with criminals. You, like, criminals, criminals. Like, mm -hmm. big criminals. You dealing drugs, you drinking, you smoking. And finger popping holes in the backseat. Yeah. In a I hotel think, with a half a million dollars. You like, in DMX. He's right, sleeping by I, the car. Bro, drunk as shit. Stealing your bra. Listen, nigga, I'm sold. <laughs> when is the documentary coming out? <laughs> let, let me see. When is it coming out, sir? It's it it working. It's it working it process. It is incredible. Because when you was going, we're, we're jumping ahead, but we're going to go back. When you were going through everything you was going through as young Berg, always in the news, mm -hmm. I'm like, this is a lot of trolling and trauma. And I'm like, how come he ain't take his own life? Real shit, the amount of shit you going through. Yeah, niggas, yeah, we went through a we, lot we of seen, shit. We done seen people, Man, you know, stab niggas take their life for less. Yo, yo, niggas in the industry done stabbed themselves in the yeah. eye. But been Who's that artist? Yeah. That artist. That artist. Niggas stabbed themselves yeah, in yeah. the yeah. Let's, let's keep going through the story, man. I got tough skin. I'm built for this that's shit. That's what I'm saying. I'm tough leather. Why have been mentally tough? But for your mom, we're to the point where we're talking about, do you, your mother, she was justified in doing what she did at the time. Yeah. It wasn't the flyest thing in the world. I think maybe she could have talked to you, but I'm not sure. She just, doesn't talk to him. Yeah, just listening to the story you told us, I don't know what gets through to a kid that's got a half a million dollars but doing at all 14. this fucked up shit at 13, 14. 14. Like, you might take some drastic measures if you think you're saving your son's life. Yeah, I mean, it's all based on perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like, now that I'm older, like, I think that if I was, if I was, 35 and I wasn't and I was fucked up then I might even hold you know what I'm saying a, a, a bigger grudge but like I'm 35 and I'm up so it's like you can look back and be like you know what that saved my life you know what I'm saying like but right. at that moment as a kid being signed to my idol and this that and the third you was it was pissed. like are you fucking crazy yeah. but you on the other side of that you getting beat up in studios by grown men and jumping but, you in see, the, but in look, the see but don't but don't don't category Rise it like that. I think that when you're around a certain crew or whatever, and you around niggas, that's you don't have fights, nigga. Like yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ain't fucking with that, that logic don't work on. But that's how they but communicate. They, they, like, all, they no, already didn't, the they didn't understand me from the jump. I told you I was selling crack already before all this mm. shit didn't happen. So Which they didn't understand where I was to going call a, to call it. Like I, I look at, I look at. Okay, I look at how I look at how Matt, I'm not a parent. I look at how protective math is over his daughters. Mm -hmm. I, you even say daughter and, and, and put some and foul sons. shit behind it. No, yeah. I'm just, just like I've seen. You know, what I'm saying? I've seen right. how he gets down. Right. I can't imagine him hearing that his son got jumped in the studio by some grown ass men over some record deal shit. And he don't look at him. Look, just look at his face. But I, you heard what he said. His I told you, just buildings burnt down. They burnt down the building. Like, it, it, it was not. It was not. It was not. Shit. Yeah, yeah, like that. They your tried mother, to kill your mother's not going to react the way your your father and your son True. will. Your True. mother's gonna do yeah. something True. different. Yeah. Your father's gonna True. call the boys and unleash the dogs of war. Your right. mother, she only got so many alternatives in that. For her, yeah, had to seem like yeah. When when your moms can't control you, it's it's. It's, yeah. it's different, bro. Man, I'm so glad all this shit happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just to be like, right here to be having the conversation, you like, know? My, mom, my mom's had me, it was either spar fit or I had to see a psychiatrist from like 13 to like 16. No, I did all that shit too. Like, nigga, before I got my record deal, nigga, I was in juvie. I was in all that shit. Like, my mom sent me to juvenile hall. Like, nigga, like all that shit. Like, I was a bad, bad kid. Like, right. for real, for real. Like, right. every, like, school kicked out of the whole shit. Like, but what, you know what was it about that life that you just felt like, I need to reject this? 
I just because I'm lie. sure if you I, have, I don't you have I don't want to no no hell no um but I gave my whole life to this music business. I don't have no kids. I don't have nothing. I don't have no personal life. Like to be here, I'm working on that. This is going to be the the next chapter of my life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but um, man, I, I feel bogus for saying this shit. But I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Like, I watched an older sibling of mine be like a titty baby. You know what I'm saying? To where like he was on my mama. Like he would fuck up so many times and he would do this shit. He was older than me, but he was like the mama's boy and this, that, and third. And once my parents divorced, I hated seeing my mom with other men. So like I rebelled so much and it just drove me to, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. I'm not going to be like my older brother. I don't need you for shit. I don't care about how much money y'all got. I'm going to go get it my own way. Yeah. And the music was my way. So if I had to go sell crack in the process of doing that to make my own way, it was just so embedded in me just to show that I don't need nothing from y'all. I don't care about how Yo. much money you got, yeah. which is stupid now in hindsight. I don't know about but that, that's how I did the same thing in college. Yeah, My parents was like, yo, I had both my parents too. And they was like, we don't fuck with this music shit. Mm -hmm. You smart. You need to go get, a, get your degree, be a lawyer, doctor. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to promote parties. Right. And what did I I do I got with niggas out in Baltimore, mm -hmm. started selling drugs with Snipe, mm -hmm. crack. I know we had to check fiends, beat mm -hmm. up fiends. I said, I don't want to do that. Right. That I started selling weed, thinking it's simpler. Started smoking the weed. They had to find ways to pay niggas. Niggas was looking for us and all that. Right. I said, guess what? I'm not a drug dealer. But I definitely tried it because why? I wanted to be in the music business. At that time, the business was all... I tell niggas all the time, and I, and I, I don't want to sound crazy but i'd be like the music business was so different back then yeah than it is now it wasn't accessible it was really like it's like are you lying? Lying? Like, it, I, and like, it was more gooned out, out. Here. like you know what i'm saying like it, it you're gonna be who like it, it was wasn't accessible out. no mm. that, yeah that's why his story is amazing to get in at 13. Mm. You, you mind me asking why did your parents split up um from what i can remember back then in them days i think that it's kind of like looking back in hindsight uh they started businesses together, and I think that when you when when the Too money, much the twine, and all, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying, when you come from nothing, it's kind of like right? what, what um well I, it's kind of like I don't want to say names, but it's kind of like my dad felt like he put my mom on, mm. and my mom sh shot up, mm. and my dad, you know what I'm saying, stay where he male was Male ego, at. no, no, he was he was he was still he was living, still winning. but at the same token, male ego and male pride always want to be honored with the fact that I put you on. And I think that with her and her side of the family, they took over the business and her parents and her, you know what I'm saying? Like right. they, it turned into their thing and it turned less into what Their we thing. did together. Gotcha. Cause my dad was like, my mom was just a school teacher when my dad met her. And my dad was like, well, you're astute. Like you're smart. Like let's send you back to college. Let's do this. And he invested into my mom. And once she mm. blew up and caught the bag. She ain't it, appreciate him? From his perspective. From his perspective. Right. Cause you know, I'm a, like my life is also different. Like, I was so bad that, I, like, when I was in junior high, like, I was like, fuck living with my mom in the suburbs or whatever. And I went and lived, like, when my parents got divorced, my dad was an entrepreneur and he had hella real estate in the city. But he was just such a real nigga. He went moved and instead of spending a big bag because he was paying for the house in the suburbs. Doing that, he went moved into one of his buildings as a, like, with that he had, like, a three-flat building or whatever. Right. And I moved in with him. And that's how I ended up back in the... In the, in the inner city to meet LEP and to oh, meet so all these niggas, you know what I'm saying? You wasn't sneaking out the mansion. No, nah, like, was outside. my parents got divorced and I went and lived with my dad oh, okay. and I moved into the inner outside. city, got into it. the streets in the east side of Chicago. You know what happened what after he came and got you, because we kind of skipped over, mm -hmm. he, he, comes to, he comes to rescue you, took you to buy From the CDs. From the Yeah. He <laughs> took you to buy the CDs. <laughs> so what happened was he took you to buy the Nas CD and all of that? I came back. I got back into the mix, you know what I'm saying? And my dad actually like funded my career. Like he put me in a studio, you know what I'm saying? Like in this back in the days where niggas don't even relate to this shit. Like I used to have to get the beats and write the songs before I get to the studio. Same Cause the time. studio time was so limited that you right. just gotta go dump, 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 right, dump, right. dump. Like you have the prepared. songs ready right. yeah. to get your shit. So from there, I ended up doing that. And um, I ended up, circling back on my relationships from Eve and all this other shit. And then Troy Carter and Jay Irvin started, you know what I'm saying, having some influence on my career. And I actually moved to Philadelphia just to be around them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I lived in North Philly and all that other stuff. And from there, 
I moved to LA, LA because Troy and them, they did like a partnership with Matthew Knowles at the time or whatever they called it. They, they started some shit called Sanctuary Music. Mm -hmm. And um, that brought me to LA and um, they put me up. And my weed man was my weed man. And uh, I ended up in the midst of that time, I, I ain't gonna lie, like, I really got back in the streets at that time because my weed man was in LA and like I was like getting pounds of like mid, like some Reggie shit and was selling it in Chicago for me. Like he was shipping me pounds. Right. And like during that time, I was Shauna's hype man. Now Shauna, when I first was growing up and I fell in love with hip hop, and she was with infamous syndicate sign of Relativity the Records. The other girl, yeah, she was with, with, with other her girl. and Tifa. Yeah. So that's how I fell in love with it through them right there. But now she's evolved and she's ludicrous artist and she got getting some head. So I was Shauna Hype Man. Like y'all can go Google and YouTube like Shauna getting some head performance. I'm the nigga with a, with a bottle in his hand like performing yeah. with red monkey jeans on saying all our Hype Man lyrics. Right. And from there, she was managed by Hustle. John Monopoly, and John Monopoly had a, like an intern or a little brother who was Billy J that I met from being um, her, her hype man. And me and Billy hit it off immediately because we did, like the same age. He was under, you know what I'm saying? Like we right. both the young boys or whatever. So, and Billy had super ambition. He was super ambitious. And like, I was like, yo, I got these records. I'm really an artist, this, that, and the third or whatever. And um, I stole my weed man credit card and I was living with him. I stole his credit card. And I booked Billy a flight to LA. And I was like, yo, like, shit, like, let's take some meetings. Cause Billy was like, yo, I can get us in some meetings. Da, da, da. And he ended up hitting Epic Records. And um, around that time, like, I made the song Sexy Lady at my Weed Man house. Like, this is like back in the day, like, I had no engineer. Like, I'll go press three and run in the booth and, you know, da, 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 run back out, press it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I recorded myself and did the whole shit and wrote the hook with my my childhood friend Rob Holiday and all and Junior, the guy that was on the record. And Billy actually made a call to Epic Records. Well, I'm kind of fast forwarding that. This song, "Sexy Lady," man, we was in LA and like it used to be a club called Privilege. My weed man was a club promoter. It was one of the hottest clubs. Like I used to go in a club with a chinchilla on, nigga, like trying to vibe out. Nigga, I was really tripping out or whatever, but like they loved the song Sexy Lady. The song started building up in this one club because a DJ Echo from Power 106 at the time was always the resident club. He was spending, he fucked with me. So from there, DJ Echo took me to Power 106. I went and told my life story in a mixer meeting and cried and did the whole shit and played the record. And next thing I know, man, like, by the time Millie, me and Billy really got it rocking, rocking, my song was like number one on Power 106. And like it was number one, the number one song in LA. We ain't have no deal. I wasn't from LA. So that's not a traditional story. You know right. what I'm saying? Cause you think the nigga that got the number one song from the city, the big city, he's from LA. Nigga, I was just a nigga from Chicago. And my song just took over and, and, and Billy ended up ushering me into my deal, our first label deal with Epic Records. And that's how I got on as Young Bird. Wow. Was wait, that wait, 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 hold on. What did your mean? What did your weed man do <laughs> when he found out you stole his credit card? He hated it, but he was also my manager. He was partners with Billy at the time. He ended up hitting it off with Billy, and they ended up being, you know what I'm saying, coming together and so being it so out. it all whatever. It was a three hundred dollar flight to get a label deal. So that was out. around the time when when um me and you met, right? Yep. So so you were still writing. Records, because you wasn't just writing uh -huh. rap records. You was right. writing all types of records. I don't, I don't think that people know that. Mm -hmm. When did you start doing that, though? I think it first started off, y'all remember uh, Barbershop 2 or whatever? Like, mm -hmm. remember when Keisha Cole mm -hmm. and Eve, and like they had like a big soundtrack or whatever? I ended up writing records on that Barbershop soundtrack because um, Troy and Jay affiliation with Eve, and you know, Eve was the biggest thing, and she was on Interscope, mm -hmm. and the soundtrack came out through Interscope as well. So I was granted a lot of opportunity to be involved with shit like that. And then um, this girl named Morgan Smith that Eve had signed, I wrote her whole album. She was signed to Interscope. They ended up eventually dropping her, it didn't work out. But um, during that path, I ended up writing Evolution, the hook, like Eve's last album, I wrote the hook to Evolution, and like my vocals are still on the track or whatever, and that was like my first writing credit. I think that was like in 2002, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So from there, like I was just like, yo, I really can do this, and I was really just trying to sneak in the game or whatever, but that kind of spawned my songwriting and producing career like in 02. Cause you was even singing on shit back then. You was singing the songs out and all yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Like shit. I was the demo nigga. Yeah, he like, was singing. I was <laughs> the one that was singing the demo. Like oh, right yeah. now, like I got 
a bunch of killers around me that, you know what I'm saying, that <laughs> I work with or whatever, and they do the demos, but like I was literally the nigga that was singing the demo and doing all the other shit, you know what I'm saying? This is early, like this is pre auto tone damn that. We were shocked as shit when you was coming in and doing uh, all for that sure. shit. What, uh, what, what was the driving force? What was, what were you saying to yourself every day that made you just keep pushing in that same direction? I had to prove my parents wrong. Hmm. They never believed in it, you know. And then my, once my father started giving me the in, the energy and like, I was like a super boost. Yeah. So I had something to prove because you know I dropped out of high school. I did all this other shit. Like right. I took the the crazy route to get to wherever. So my driving force was like, man, I don't have nothing else. I literally like that's why it's so crazy for me to be. And I'm like, I really had nothing else but music. Like, and I just refused to be the nigga that went and ran a family business. Mm. Even though that's fire, like if you got a family yeah. business, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's, like, that's fucking right. I wouldn't advise hell. nobody else yeah. to go against yeah. that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. I just refuse to go do it. It's an easy alternative if your parents have a business set up. Most parents dream about leave, being able to leave their it's kids. It's too low, wasn't developed, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, already, I'm dreaming about that right now, that. like OCG shit. Yeah. Wasn't developed, my about man. leaving something for you. I just sold my catalog, so my kids ain't gonna have to work, you know what I'm saying? But awesome. Can you imagine? The kids you don't got? Can you exactly. imagine if they? Can you imagine if they take your route? Man, I, I couldn't even judge them. Hmm. I know what it took for me to get here. But you wouldn't right. want to stop them. I would do all, everything in my power too. But if try and put them on game, I think that the communication barrier back then for me growing up, you couldn't have real conversations candid with your kids like that. Now you can grow up and you can say, yo. For me, I can I have a reference point. Like my whole life is documented on YouTube, damn near. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, yo, like instead of me telling you. I'll just show Hello. you. This was me. Right. This right. is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Back right. then, it was, wasn't realistic to, to be somebody that was born in the late 80s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If like, niggas wasn't even giving kids that type of talk. It was like, well, stay in your fucking place yeah. right. as a child. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it wasn't that vibe to where your parents had to explain zero to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm coming yeah, from that, that here. Like, like, explain nothing. myself to who? who? Right. Right. Fuck out, right. fuck out of here. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Do you got more money than them now? My parents? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we there is a huge chunk of story we we're jumping over. Which is what part? Right? After Sexy Lady came out and Young Berg was ah, yo. dropping these hits left, mm -hmm. right, and center, you went through a shit ton of content. Yeah, let's get into it. Everybody was your chain went on tour, like there was all kinds oh, of well, all that's before, 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 Yeah, I I, and I ne I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I've never talked about none of this shit that we about to get into. Like this chapter, yeah. I was saying we, that's but what I'm we going, met. I know, no, no, I'm gonna get into it with y'all just because I respect the energy. You know what I'm saying? This is some yeah, real nigga salute, shit for salute. real. Yo, the chain was so fire. So yo, fire. Right, so look, here's so it. Yo, look, fire. whose yeah. idea was that? I'm gonna though. tell you. So look, um, I was out, you know, I'm kicking it with, with, with Jim and all this shit, but I took a liking to my dog, Shice Bubs. And yo, Bubsy, you know what I'm saying? He had yeah. the Bubsy. Ike Key, the Piff, you know what I'm saying? Right. So me and Bubs would be everywhere. Right. And Bubs had like a big dumb chain or whatever. And he was like, yo, I'm gonna take you to my man downtown, show you where. So my man, I didn't even know it was New York gang shit, like the Decepticon. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's why I thought it was fire. No, I, was yeah. like, I didn't know none of that and shit. My older cousins, you know, they, they was all into that I shit. I knew none of that shit, but like, he had just showed me like the transformer shit, and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna get this shit big as hell. Just make it the biggest possible shit, blah 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 blah. Yeah. And fucking um, we made it. And like one side was one the transformer, the, the, other the other side, side was the other shit. Right, yeah. And Bubs put me on that. Shice Bubs, the one that took me to go get that chain. Wow, that's family. Yeah. How many Decepts walked up to you like, yo? None, cause None? I wasn't even in that lane. Like I was like the sexy nigga. I told I was the sexiest nigga in America. Right. Sexy can I? Sexy lady? You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I was straight for the hoes. So it wasn't like I was even around none of that shit. But as far as like how the chain and all that other bullshit happened, so I remember I was signed to Epic and Koch Records was doing my radio promo. Like shout out to them, D and Shadow and all them. They were doing my radio side because Epic was more so a pop label and it was the era of me, Nipsey Hussle, Sean Kingston, uh, I remember all that, of yeah. us being signed to Epic at that time. Right. So fucking um. I was the hot nigga at the time, like uh, and fucking um, they were like, yo, uh, we, we want you to go to this club, host this club. Wait, 
even before that. So I'm in LA and I'm headlining the Roxy. And um, my hype man was was a guy that I really revered and respected. He was like a big brother to me or whatever. And we from doing with Roxy. He's from Chicago. He right. was like an OG that I respected. Right. And um, his cousins or whatever was in the music business or whatever. And like he kind of like flexed on him at the Roxy. He didn't go get him from the front door at the show. So they had made mention, like he had made mention that he was like, yo, like y'all keep playing like trick, trick, this, that, and third. Cause his, they were his managers. You know what I'm saying? He was a previous artist. I'm gonna say his name, Cap One or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah, Cap, yeah, Cap yeah, was yeah, my yeah. motherfucking, um, my OG, my big homie, but he, he just ended up being my hype man. You know what I'm saying? He right. was like, I looked up to him. He's my big dog. You know what I'm saying? Right. So Tom and Trev, who used to manage Lisa Ray and all these niggas, they was his manager in the Kedar era when he was signing Motown. Kedar, they loved that and yeah. all the other shit. Mm -hmm. So I knew them and we was fucking um, in. LA and he didn't want to go he was he wanted to be an artist too like he had humbled himself to be my hype man I'm sure that him being 10 years or whatever my senior he right. didn't want to personally be my hype man you know what I'm saying right. he was I was his little homie but he got in got in where he fit in because for the big picture right. so I was doing the Roxy and um he didn't want to go get them niggas from the front like we was back in the back backstage drinking or whatever but he was in his bag he had bitches you know he didn't want to go get them niggas so he flies on them niggas and he had made mention of like man well you gonna keep flogging on me and trick trick and this, that, and third, blah, blah, because they was his manager and they was cousins with Trick Trick. Right. So I didn't know who Trick Trick was, nigga. I'm a 19 year old, 20 year old nigga. When he said that to me, I was just like, man, I should have sit and whatever. I don't know what the fuck going on. So from there, I was doing Summer Jam in Detroit and like I was the headliner. And um, like uh, D and Shadow had hit me, like, yo, like Trick Trick wants you to come to the club or whatever. But he said it in front of, Billy and all of us, because Billy had known about it and my whole team or whatever. And we was like, man, hell no, we ain't going to that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because just, they just said this shit at the Roxy previous. Yeah. Like, man, I don't know, it, it wasn't that far much of a gap. So it was on the radar. So I'm like, hell no, I ain't going to no shit like that, boy. You got all this bullshit going on. So from there, I flew in separately. I don't know, I think I was on a jet or some shit like that. I flew in separately and like cap and all my entourage had, was on a tour bus or whatever, like it got to the city for us to do Summer Champ. So Cap was Why like, did you fly in separate? I don't know, I was somewhere else. He's on a superstar shit, you know shit. what I'm saying? Like, He's whatever. on a superstar yeah. shit, come on. So they was already in the city and fucking um, Cap had hit me like, boy, we got hella hoes, nigga. This, I went slim from 112 and blah, 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 blah. Like, this back when Russ Parr had tours. And oh, Russ this, Parr that, morning all, show yeah, and like, all that. Niggas had known each other. It was hella camaraderie for everybody. It was on a Summer Jam show. Plies was on the show. I was on the show. It was just mad different wow. niggas. And fucking, um, he was like, yo, meet us at the club. I got off the shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was with like U.S. Marshals and shit. Like, I had the big boy security. I was with my own thing. So he's like, yo, meet us at the club, blah, blah, blah. So but I, it's Detroit. Yeah, but listen, listen. <laughs> I don't Detroit. know nothing. I'm a kid. This is before all this other shit. These no one ain't don't got no cops after nine o'clock, bro. <laughs> bro, listen. So I'm That's with my wild out there. Bro. I'm with my own security. We get there, and I meet them, and um, I'm like, damn, like I'm pulling out different jewelry. You know, how, as a as an artist, you got different sets and shit. But I had on like all purple, so it went with the other side. Of the I'm like, I'm finna just go up in and get some clothes yeah. or whatever. So we go in a club, and um. We like I'm, they shout me out now, Young Berg in the building. Bro. I got my security with me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, what the fuck? And so like, you know, back in that day, I'm like, man, I want my bag, nigga. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas getting a free walkthrough. So I'm like, yo, they gonna have to lower some bottles or something. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas is handing me mics while I'm in the club and my song coming on. Like yo, like they gotta show love. So yeah. we went to the back. And like I'm in the back with the club promoter now and like the little office of the club and shit. Was it security? Right there with us. So um, I had two, three securities. So uh, we in there, he get on the phone, blah, blah, blah. I'm with Cap at the time, mm -hmm. and we all together. He get on the phone, and he like, come back. The, the nigga like, man, my partner Trick Trick say you ain't get no play on the bottles. And I'm like, your partner? What the fuck? I'm looking at Cap like. Choose your next I'm words like, wise. We gotta get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Yeah. So we we make a beeline out this bitch. We trying to walk out, and then like the club security for the club, so all the niggas that had security on the shirt, oh no, they did beat me up, beat beat they cap down. up, they beat down. my security up, beat yeah. all of us up. You know what I'm saying? And like we get to the back, and like I'm holding on to the chain. It's like three, four, five niggas security beat me up, whatever. I let the chain go. I was just a casualty at war. I was just the face of the operation. 
and mm. really had beef with with, with, the, the with my hype man at the time. But what does it matter doing something to him? You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you you got to do it to me. Yeah. I, and I'm totally caught off guard because I ain't know none of that shit was going on. I'm just, bro, at that time, I didn't know what Trick Trick looked like or whatever. Like, nigga, like, I'm just a young kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I ain't know none of that shit. And that shit happened. And, um... Like, they, like, rush me out the city. They, I'm like, yo, like, I want to go and perform. Like, I was fucked up, but I'm like, man, I want to go perform for the fans. They're like, nah, don't do that. But I'm like, you, you can't do that. That uh, got me out of the city. And then, like, I just had to hold that. And it was still my man. So I couldn't go and say. He was say, still with you. Yeah. He fucked up with me. He lumped up and beat up with me. <laughs> right. So I can't say, yo, this nigga really the reason why, you know what I'm saying, to clean right, my right. face because he my OG. And I just had to hold that. Wow. And that's how that went. And I ain't know nothing about all, all the shit that went on from there. Like, that's how that went. And wow. I was just the face of the operation, so they got me. How did the security get me? When you see, like, when you see, like, 27 niggas in security shirts that's big as hell, I don't know, nigga. I was in a, uh, I was surrounded by the whole club security. Yes, nigga, that was U.S. Marshals, but they made us take the guns back on the bus when we was walking through the back door. Like, yo, you don't need no guns in here. It was, and it was all type of Detroit police in front of this shit. But niggas was in cahoots with the whole little, uh, you did yeah, the I'm whole the, move. Look, but it was bigger Detroit. than me, though. It, you know what I'm saying? It was bigger Detroit, than me. Like, bro. I ain't know how, what, what, I ain't know what Trick Trick meant, meant to Detroit. Man. So I'm just a young nigga that was in a mix of, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just a hoe getter. Like, I'm out here, like, I'm looking for the oh, bitches. Hope, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't really tapped in with the street life or with nothing like that. Right. Like, I'm just like. You're doing your music. I'm, I'm out here. I'm up to headline Summer Jam. Right. I'm not thinking about no, you know what I'm saying? Like. No shit in California that, now. That's when Detroit. like the no fly zone thing started becoming real popular yeah, after I, that incident. I, but, uh, but that's, I when, thought that's when that was, they realized Detroit. Detroit wasn't they wasn't playing. So no, there was too much money coming through their city. And you, you come and on, you drive. They around. always felt like at artists, that time. Yeah, the city looked crazy. And there's all these dudes out there, and they're like, "Yo, we not getting a piece of none of this." Shit. I don't understand that. Can can y'all really vibe me with that? Because if y'all don't got no talent out there. And there's nothing's going on out there, and they're playing music from around the country, and we're flying niggas out here to come get money. What is your issue with the niggas that's coming to get money? Like, that, oh no, that's, but you missing the underlying yeah. story. Mm -hmm. Listen, my, Cap, my guy. No, I'm talking about before. No, no, no. With your story, yeah. I get it. Yeah. He's cousins, about, it but why cousins 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 like that. in general, yeah, not, not yeah. with you, not mm -hmm. with you. But Detroit was like that in general. Y'all niggas coming through here. Yo, what the fuck? California is like that. Yeah. You can be getting money and, check in. and and they like, yo, check in with me. And it's like, yo, bro, like, they're booking me out here to come get money out here because I'm doing shit over there. See, but it's different though. I was not a street rapper. Mm -hmm. I was the guy for the chicks. That's like fucking, you know what I'm saying? Right. Flow rider checking in or somebody right. like, you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bro, like, <laughs> it wasn't about, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, what is checking in? Like, with check, I, I have no ties, you know right. what I'm saying? And no street niggas. Right. Like, I'm supposed to just come in, get off the jet, go to my suite, fuck on some hoes, do the show and leave. It's not right. even like a thought of Yo, like, let me tap in with, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that shit didn't even resonate with me at all. It, like, I don't politics. even know what that meant. That didn't even, that it wasn't even a thing. Yeah. It's Have you politics. had a chance to speak to Trick Trick since that happened? Nah. Ever? Like, no. Okay. Would you be open to it? No. I mean, not for what though? Like it's 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 a history. It's over. Yeah, yeah like what, what do we now. what do we have to gain from that conversation for me to say, yo, it it really for him wasn't to say, me. I know it wasn't really about you. But for me to say, man, I didn't even know who you were. You know what I'm saying? Right. When that happened. I just think in that era, like, I was big. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and at the beginning of the World Star era and the YouTube era, like, that was the move. Mm -hmm. That was definitely the that move. That was the move. Right. But And I was so big at the time that it was like, that's the move. And I decided to wear such a captivating chain at the time that it's like, this is the move. So were you producing all the records back then too? Yeah. Around that same time? Mm hmm Hold on. Because this, I was, what, what was the feeling when you saw that chain just moving around? Did you feel betrayed? I don't know. It was a hard pill to swallow because I was living in the house with the guy that was behind everything. I was still living like this is my guy. So right. I didn't know how to feel. What was he saying? 
Was he apologizing every day? Was Did he, he offer to get it back? Yeah, like what was what it? What could he do? He was my hype man. He didn't have the capital. He didn't have the finances to do nothing. He I fucked was a big dog. That's yeah. all. He he made a big fucking mistake yeah, by not going to the door, and it cost the nigga some shit. He's lucky that he didn't just be like, "Yo, get the fuck." Like, and I'm, I'm I'm leaving. Fuck out of here. I don't nigga. know. I don't know what he was thinking. I think that we were all young and we were all trying to figure it out. Yeah, because you was but young. I could, I could commend you for not yeah. putting him out there. Because in a situation like that, you, you you kind of be like, damn, I'm getting dragged. But then again, they don't even know what it but, is. But he wasn't somebody that would pin a headline to. So it'd be different if it was like, no, such and such did this. It was like he was somebody no, no, in yeah, my inner circle. He became known. He was no more than that. Yeah, yeah. But, but but this is but this happens after the fact or whatever. But it's based oh, wow. off that. Wow. And he switched sides and turned and. When it got dark for me, he went and did diss records on me and did all type of shit. You know oh, what I'm wow. saying? Like, yeah, like, so this shit got even more diabolical and sick after that. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. I was just so, like, like, I looked up to this nigga. You know what I'm saying? He was the reason why I was talking the way I was talking. Like, his his influence on me was symbolic. Like, you know how you got an OG then? You're like, yo, it was almost a... It was a mentor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a big brother. Like, that was my yeah. brother, you know? So I couldn't really imagine, like, saying those things. And when it got traumatic for me, he, niggas fell back on me. And then it wasn't a good look for him to be around me. But his face was still clean in the same process. You, you know said what I'm that before we started filming something that I wanted. Right, right in this era, in this mm -hmm. pocket, you were talking about how when things got bad for you, and uh, you know all these videos are flying about you mm -hmm. getting you getting attacked and you getting hit and the main no thing. You said people started treating you like you did something wrong. You was like, yo, hold up, yeah. I'm the victim, and all these people are like shitting on me and stepping away from me, and all of a sudden it's a bad look to be around me. It wasn't really like like that happened. The, 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 them the two only things that happened. That shit in Detroit, which had nothing to do with me, and then the shit with Mano or whatever, and that. And that and that was and that was doctored up and treated too. Like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I, I was I was disappointed about how that went too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And even in hindsight, like looking back on it, like you know what I'm saying. I don't got no bad feelings about Mano or nothing like that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You know. Me and Jim are like this, you know what I'm saying? And that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And Mano also reached out, tried to, you know what I'm saying? But it's in that same line of trick trick shit. Like, there ain't no reason for us to really like link up, like or talk mm -hmm. or do nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just water under the bridge. Mm. That's a that's a real good way to go about it because you're gonna you're gonna face a lot of that shit. I ain't gonna I lie. Yeah. Over nah. years. The last time I saw you and Mano together, that I was there and I was I didn't get a chance to apologize to Mano for that, but they didn't know they was going to see each other. And it was all set up. Oh, set. yeah. Mano yeah. thought that we was trying to set him yeah. up. Yeah, the, the way it happened, my Heineken man, interview, yeah. They was like, yo, we got Mano coming through to do the interview. I said, bet. They're giving the lineup. They and like, I had a bunch of niggas from... Nigga. From, yeah. The, the, small niggas niggas from me. the yeah. smallest nigga was 6'4", 250. Like, I had a <laughs> bunch of... So but you I didn't know that Mano was going to be said, there, nah, honestly. fuck that. This shit ain't happening again. No, what happened was... We knew they were coming, but we were told that they spoke and it was cool between them. Yeah. And that wasn't true. It wasn't true. So now Mano's doing the interview. Berg is outside, hit maker, and he's chilling. He, no crazy energy. Yeah. The interview with Mano's going great. Mano turns around and sees him. Mano lets it go for like 10 seconds, and he's like, whose bright idea was it? to invite Young Berg. He doesn't hear that because he's outside. Yeah, We're mind. like this. <laughs> Mano looks at me. He's like, I know he ain't do this shit. He look at Nelson, Money Nels. Then he look at Maya. He's like, so you suck dick, huh, bitch? Because he figured it out. Yeah. So now Mano's only with his manager. If Mano's not pussy, but what Berg had with him, that's not a fair fight. Yeah. The smallest nigga was 6'4", 250. <laughs> the biggest nigga is 6'8", 300. And it wasn't even like we knew that. No, he didn't right. know. And they met each other. Everything was calm. But I, I, didn't, I wanted to apologize to Mano for that because it came out fucked up. And even to Berg, he ain't know. But. And that was the first time they had met each other since that incident. Yeah, that wow. situation was crazy. Yeah. Like, 
the, the situation with Mano is like me and Mano were actually really cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I put him on my remix, the business remix or whatever. He, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we had mutual alliances. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like we we vibed out. And um, damn, how that shit happened? We was in Atlanta, and uh, I was there, and like I had a chip on my shoulder. Like I never forget. Like I probably on like three ecstasy pills. Like I was geeked up. I was turned up. We went to like the bowling alley first. Then we went to uh to a club, I forget what club we was at. And like, I was wilding that night. Like, I was like performing, dancing with fat girls, kissing fat my girls. Nigga, that's that's my nigga, nigga right here. I was bugging out that night. Like, I was on a different type of time. Radioactive You said he was on like, three X pills, yeah, my nigga, come on. I was in a different type gone. of bag that night. Yeah. And um, I think that we went, well, this what happened. Damn it, all this shit kind of lead back to Cap. Yo, I'm so sorry, Cap. Oh, yo, man, yeah, Jesus. That's crazy. So prior to that, I, Billy's sitting right over here, too, because Billy was with me. I ain't going to lie. Billy's on the road. He in his phone right yeah, now. Billy, he over, yo, he's over like, there quiet like, right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I see you in the corner so, quiet, man. Bro, I think we were in Phoenix or some shit, right? Right? And, like, me and Mano had, like, the same, like, type of hosting. And, like, I sent Billy and Cap inside to, like, go vid out the section, make it seem what it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, cool. Man. Keep your face clean, my brother. Yeah. Um, so uh, I sent niggas to vet out the section, and then my bro came back to me like, yo, like, uh, I had a bunch of chicks with me and shit. Like, yo, Mano in our section, he don't want to get out the section. Blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, that's a bro. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, nigga, we finna crash it. He ain't got to get out the section. We finna crash it. So, like, I went in. I'm talking about I murdered the show. Like, I had, like, a great, one of my greatest performances ever. And, like, I guess it was some offense taken. Whatever words were exchanged between them in the process of me getting to my section. I didn't know, though. So, when I seen Mano, was, oh, great, what up? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was that nigga at the time. So, fucking, um, from there, some tension, I think, between them. And now we in a club. And like the the Detroit shit had happened, so I got a chip on my shoulder. Now I'm just like a fully loaded grenade. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like and you want three. Yeah, three and, I'm with, and I'm with a hundred niggas, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm with security, I'm with I'm just like wilding out type shit. And um, we get in a section and Mano back in a, a section or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And um, I think like I we had some exchange some words, I said some crazy shit or whatever, and I think like What was the crazy shit? I don't remember exactly because I was on three pill, but this is my perspective. Like his perspective could be different, but this is my perspective on a loaded night. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think that um fucking uh that happened, I threw a drink at niggas and just like a riot in, ensued or whatever. Niggas just started going blah 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 blah. The next morning I woke up, and that's the part I didn't love, you know what I'm saying? And like I'm so past it, you know what I'm saying? But at that time, I didn't love it. The next morning, I woke up after the whole shit happened, and um, I was on the phone, man. Though, and um, I think Alpha Mega, the nigga that used to be around Ti, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. ended up putting us on the phone or whatever, blah, blah blah. So I was just like, bro, like, man, my bad, bro. Like, you know, I'm geeked up. Like, I got a chip on my shoulder. Like, all this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas. You know what I'm going through. You know that. You know what I'm saying. He was right. like, "Man, I love you, bro. Like, you just got the wrong niggas around you, bro. Like, you got to wisen up. You got the wrong niggas around you. That should never how you moving like that." Da, 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 da. Right. Mind you, like, and that was and that was all cool. And we can't go to the phone, like, bro. I ain't never gonna talk about this shit ever again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's love, bro. Like, I apologize. Blah blah blah. And um, shit, I'm riding my Range Rover with the nigga Cap. And the nigga like, oh, I'm in his Range Rover. Excuse me. We riding and um. They like the slap heard around the country. Hot 1079 by the Mano's by the time me and do all that shit. And I hung up, just hung up the phone with him, like, yo, bro, you my big bro. Like, bro, I'm sorry about the, you know what I'm saying? Like, da da da. And like, nigga, it was like literally like, like we hung up and maybe 30 minutes later, nigga, I heard that shit on the radio. So I'm like, damn, dog. Like, but then again, like in hindsight, like how we talk about perspective, this was early in the the world star era. Mano was just coming home. Mano was just trying to find Made his way. Made the publicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, he, and it's and like, he, he, shoot he the sat video. right in that chair. He uh -huh. said, yo, I did a lot of stuff for attention. And the, and the crazy thing is, I think that he might have had influence and then with the shit happened with me and the chain or whatever and he seen what the niggas was getting from that shit the or energy. whatever. It was just like, fuck it. Easy target. You know what I'm saying? Like it but, was, but, what, was, it, was it him directly or was it he people didn't, around He didn't shoot that video. The, the, the perspective from the video was from the side. He didn't, it's not like 
he filmed mm. it and, and told everybody to do it. Like he was a part of the incident, but niggas, when we saw the video, I was at the source. I believe I was at the Source magazine. What the video? Time. There was a video of, of the of that incident. Nah. Oh, bro. Yes, sir. It's just a it, whatever it is. It's just a, a t it was a, like this was the exact thing. I'm talking to him. Blah blah blah. We on. I throw a drink and then it's just melee. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Blah, he was blah, blah. leaning down. He was he was elevated. Mm -hmm. You were here and y'all were having a conversation. And then the next thing is his hand. You you might have made a move. Then his hand went, and that's when everything Lived broke out. Right. But what what I'm saying is, he didn't. It was being filmed at the time. They were just watching two really famous rap niggas talking to each other. Right. And we're talking about the beginning of the World Star movement. Of course, that was something to get on film. And they're going to cut it. And you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. While so the it. way they docked this they shit gonna, up, they you know what I'm saying? But they can cut it. They, this is where it happened. Right. And this is everything around the yeah, world. That's it. Listen, hey, yo, man. Let's talk to me. Trust know. me. I know, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> we World Star brothers. No, man. <laughs> Not, bro. Bro. Not no more. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the clip right there. <laughs> number five. We number five. We number five. But that's that, that, like that that happened, and what kind of like threw me up like mm. to that because we never really had no altercation. Yeah. Like we never had no, you know what right. I'm saying? Like like but, but just to each other, whatever. But yeah. when you kept, when, this what it was though. Nah, you doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that it wasn't necessarily like we had an altercation because I had three security with me. It yeah. wasn't like he. Nah, them niggas giants. He ain't, man. He ain't, he ain't put man. no, he ain't do no, it was, but he ain't do nothing crazy to me or whatever. Like what the story of a trade, that ain't what happened. It was just a melee of all the other shit. And what I can say is that, man, like, man, shit. Like, and by now you was the easy target. Nah, but even looking back in perspective and hindsight, it ain't even about easy target or this. No, that, I mean third, for the media. No, like, yes, but ultimately, like. Yeah. yeah. If you in that up. position and you trying to make a name for your career or whatever, and you trying to do something, and this is like something that's in the era of this is before clickbait, this is before like this, in the world star era or whatever. Yeah, like I'm going era. for it. He ran for, for it. it. I'm, yo, I'm going. I'm, I'm going for it. Like he ran call, with him. call me up. Let me talk about the story. And guess what? I got a record out, or my record is coming. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't care for that much as a younger guy. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was just like, damn, like. Here we go as again. soon as no, it wasn't a here we go again. It was just more so like I just had a candid conversation with you on the phone. Like we had a real conversation with, right. with uh, alleged G's at that time, patching niggas in, you know what I'm saying? Like big homies or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And we said it was dead, like, you know what I'm saying, when right. we got off the phone. And you know, shit, niggas decided to, you know, take it and, I mean, and move on with it. And I mean, they, they know the, it, like we ain't got no real beef. We ain't had, never had no real beef. It was never like that. Right. And bro then reached out to me, you know what I'm saying, through certain people or whatever. Yeah. And like we, you know what I'm saying, like, but shit it just happened. it's just water in the bridge. I got no like, altercation. I got no altercation over pretty much nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cali fighting six niggas. Mm -hmm. And I was just outside having a cool conversation with the nigga that started the whole shit. So I understand. Yeah. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, and, and to this day, the story, he, he still tells the story in a way where it was like, it was drama. Right. He was outside I chilling. I never knew you was outside with him. We was outside wow. chilling, bro. Chilling. Mm. Was so he setting I get you it. up? Was he setting you up that now, night? I mean, I, st I still believe that. You know, he say, he say something else, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like- The only God reason damn. I ain't like it, cause I was little bro. You know this what I'm saying? Like, I was the little nigga. You know this what I'm saying? So I was thinking business, that, bro. you know what I'm saying? But I learned that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I'm just skipping over and that. It, that it we know now it's the entertainment you know, business. It, it, like, in hindsight, looking back like on some G shit, like, they did what they needed to shit do. Shit was with never that. no drama. They did what they was, you know, niggas, niggas fresh, out the, fresh out of the situation, they trying to make their own way. So this mm -hmm. is another one where you don't judge. You can't judge them because you get it. Yeah, because it wasn't like. He violated, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like we had a moment to where it was just like, I was just so like, mm -hmm. like, but no, it was just on, it was on some like, some he, fresh shit. He was wild you know he threw a saying? drink on yeah, niggas. Like, yeah. Shit went the wrong way. If I, yeah, if I never provoked it. that, if I never threw that drink, then it wouldn't have been nothing. Yeah.
And That's I'm sure, fair, you know bro. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but, and he don't have to respond to this. We don't got to do nothing like no, that or whatever. Yeah, this no, ain't no open door. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no. To me, this is my perspective. His perspective it could be what it is. But at the same token, this is 20 years, years later. Ago. Right. Yeah. Like, this is two like, decades. this is 2007, 2008. Right. We've grown and matured so much, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and that's why we able to talk about this shit. But I'm just a person that's so transparent that I want to lay everything flat for people to be able to look at my shit and learn from it, take it as inspiration, see where I fucked up, and be able to use my story as a testimony, for real, for real. That's dope. I can't clap, I got a drink in my Yo. Slap, slap the chair. But, but I still, I still want to know... From this point, because he's Berg, right? And everybody's tracking his when, name. Okay, okay. When, when you go home and this bullshit is going on, where, what's the transition? What's your mind like? Like, what's your mind like? I'm here now, and I still want to go here later. What's the plan? What's what's the feeling? But in that era, well, I was still like, I'm filthy rich. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like it, it's not like a. It's not like a you go home and you go like back to the peas or some shit like that. And it's like womp womp womp. Like yeah. nigga, I go to a <laughs> right. fucking mansion with a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And holding me down and this and the third. And I'm still living the high life because my records are still at a high plateau or whatever. I think that the the initial change kind of happened when um, shit kind of like started to slow down and. And I started to realize that my overhead was 50 grand a month and this, that, and the third or whatever. And I'm looking, mm -hmm. I'm taking care of niggas and I'm doing all this type of stuff. And like I was just like, yo, I gotta pivot. Like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta realize like how what, to take what, this shit another direction. What were the changes that you made? I ain't gonna lie, I don't think it was nothing that God made the change for me. Like this guy named Brian McKinney who played for the Minnesota Vikings right. or whatever. B -K -K, yeah, B Mac, you know what I'm saying? Like In he Miami. hit me. And he was like, man, I heard you write and produce records and this, that, and the third, and shit, um, I I'm starting my label, you know what I'm saying? I want you to move to Miami and work with my artists and this, that, and the third. And like, I was spending like 50 grand a month with niggas living with me, and this nigga talking about he want to pay for me to move to Miami and do all this other shit. So I'm like, I just chuck deuces on niggas. Mm. It was quiet for me as my career as an artist, because I went through so much stuff, and B-Mac had just embraced me with open arms. In a time where it wasn't cool really to be around me right. and offer me a space. And like, I ain't gonna lie, that nigga was so up, nigga. He was so, I owe a lot to that nigga, you know what people I'm saying? People love him, bro. Yo, he was so, everybody loves bro, him, bro. He was so rich to the point that like the nigga just was like, fly down here, flew me down, and just put me in a crib for a year and paid all my bills or whatever. I was like, bro, you ain't gotta worry about nothing. I just paid everything, just work. And it just gave me a free open playing field to just start trying to develop me. And I was still doing mixtapes at the time and still trying to figure the vibe out or whatever. But I was able to develop and work with these different artists to where it's like, well, damn, I'm really like the producer now. Like now I am what that was when yeah. I saw me. you. What you were Miami, looking for for that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why you was in Miami when yep. I saw you at prom. Yep. You fucking with BK. Exactly. I mean, be mad. So I was with with them, and that that kind of like started the evolution of my career, just moving like so being make comfortable. Was it born in that trip? Nah, I'm be a hundred with you. I never sought out. And was like, yo. I'm gonna be hitmaker. You know how crazy it is to say that shit for uh -huh. a nigga that went through everything we just talked about and uh -huh. then be like, I'm gonna name myself hitmaker. Hit maker. Right. I never even decided to do that. Like, I literally was in Miami in that time and I was in a booth and I was just doing hooks and just doing hooks for everybody. I did a hook for this back when Chicago started happening, like King Louie, my hoes, they do drugs. It's me actually on the hook with Pusha T and Juicy J on that song. Then wow. I did DJ Infamous song and I was the first time I ever said Hitmaker. I just went in the booth and I was like, Hitmaker. And I did a song called Double Cup featuring Young Jeezy, myself, Juicy J, and Ludacris. It was DJ Infamous single, and I was on, performing a hook, and that was my first time saying Hitmaker. And Infamous let me stay on the song, and he kind of like let me get that off first. Wow. Now that's from there. Uh, from there? From there, yeah. Shit. From there, I, um, I was in... I was in Atlanta and I was Atlanta was really clicky at the time, you know. Polo the Don had their people and this, you know what I'm saying. T Pain had his movement. Everybody had their own different shit going on. Mm -hmm. So from there, I kind of uh, I wrote a record for Tamar Braxton. And I ended up back in L. A. And from there, that's how I ended up moving back to L. A. And like that kind of like started 
me really getting in my bag, like, yo, like I'm finna be on this type of shit or whatever. Then from there, I ended up meeting Nicki Minaj, and then that kind of like took it over the top. And I was able to do like five, six records on that Pink Print album, and she ended up like really taking me under her wing, and that kind of like springboarded my career. Not the Nicki. Nah, for sure. Not the Nicki. South Jamaica Queens in the motherfucking building at all times. I commend them on his courage at for that. All because times. get the money. <laughs> South you know, Jamaica Queen, wait, wait, pause for South Jamaica. I mean, yeah. Pause for South Jamaica I mean, uh, and pause for Nicki well Minaj. Nah, go ahead. Nah, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Nicki good money though. I love Nicki. So, what happened to Cap? Still, you know, I'm he's still still my brother, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't have a relationship as we once was, but still my brother. Mm -hmm. Do you do you regret that? Uh, what, our relationship? Yeah, like not being what it is. Hell, bro, my nigga, you know how up I am right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I know we just went through a bad part of the story. Like, 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 bro, like, they, they, it's like light after the motherfucking no, bullshit. But, but, but you know being what I'm that saying? this like, is the real. first time that you really breaking down, like, the oh, whole act. Yeah. yeah. It took a lot for you to hold that all this time. Yeah, bro. a lot of years. Not really. This shit is regular shit, bro. He tough niggas, bro. Niggas, nah. 13, nigga. yeah. You tough niggas, my nigga. This is 13, nigga. You different mental health, nigga. We tough niggas, man. He don't niggas, care, man. He don't care about it's all that stuff. It's not about that. It's the, what he's been through from since 13, from the concentration camp to all this shit, Everything. being on world. Everything. Yo, so for 23 years of your life, it's just been fuckery, high levels, ex passing away. That's one of your mentors, your yeah. idols. Yeah. You have no excuse. Have no excuse. Fucking excuse. Yeah. You got a dream. You out yeah. there. You watching this show and you talk about all the shit in front of you. All the shit that this guy went through, you have no fucking excuse. And if you watching my show, you definitely know. And you know what's crazy? Ain't no excuse, bro. There's people that don't know him as Young Berg. I, before the interview started, it's like you're like Kobe Bryant number eight and yeah. Kobe Bryant 24. It's mm -hmm. mad niggas that be like, oh, Hitmaker. And it's mad people like, I didn't know Young Berg was Hitmaker. Like, mm -hmm. I think that this year, kind of like that's dope evolved yeah. and people kind of like put it together you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like people, some people didn't know like titty like, boy was two chains yeah. exactly real shit that's fact rebranding nah. nah for sure yeah. and i was around for all that shit. but the thing is man what i want people to take away from this shit like because when all that shit happened and then i was just mad resilient you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like just on a different level and then from there it started then nikki then like my whole breakthrough was like Big Sean bounced back. That was my first time I got like a real, I think that record is like seven times platinum, Super Bowl commercials, all type of shit, no sample, no nothing. That was like my first real big check. That's my first time seeing a royalty. I got like a royalty, it was like half a million dollars. My dad called me. I'm like, what That's the fuck, nigga? Time? Yeah, like wow. he like still manage you? Who? My dad? Yeah. He's my business manager for sure. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. My dad is, you know, my dad is a multi-millionaire. I'm, I'm, I'm so just curious. Shit, you know, so you got to keep the money in the family. So like for me to see that, and then from there, to become vice president of AR at Atlantic Records, to sell like 40 million records with them or whatever, to do all this other stuff. It's just to put so many different people on. Like mm -hmm. the 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 amount of people that I put on around me in this whole career is hit making and just like not even like put on to where it's like you need to credit me or thank me, but just like my perseverance and my hard work and people just being around me with my hard work has been able to bleed into their lives unconsciously. You know what I'm saying? Like I could work with a writer or a producer and not even think about that shit, but you in a studio with me, you start taking pictures with me and we start playing some shit and I get a little Instagram story or two off, you're gonna get a publishing deal. I mean, mm. like it's just, it's just, it's not even think about. Right. Or if you're an artist and you around me, you're gonna get an artist deal. Like, and it's a it's a reflection of everything that's around me. There's nobody around me that does not have a deal. Can I say something Everybody selfish? Has a deal. Uh -huh. How long you in town for? Hey, shit, I'm here, you know what I'm saying, two more days. Math. No, we got to go more than going to the studio. Yeah, let's see, let's There's see. There's nobody that ever spends any time around me that has never got a deal or anything, bro. And, like, you got to think right now. Look at this shit, bro. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here with my brother, Neat Bucks, one of the, the best out of Harlem. Like, exactly. you know what I'm saying? This man is Been fucking killing. amazing. It's my brother. And then, not only that, like, look at radio right now. Like, 13 songs out of 50 are mine. Can we run down the list? 
I mean, I, I'm I'm already in my bag, but you know what I'm saying? Keep going. Keep going. My, my single, Tink single, Tink. Mega the Stallion, Plan B, fucking Lakia, Mind Your Business, Aaron Ray. Like, it's just multiple. Like, I don't even want to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't brag on these niggas. Nah, don't, don't be, brag on don't these be modest. Nah, don't, I don't be want, modest. I don't want to don't even let do him, that. Don't let so, them even get you like that. F- f- fuck them. Think about that. So, look, this is what the real fuckery is, though. Like, so, like... Anybody that's ever dissed me or like played with me, they want a record right now. Don't you just love that? Not really. I ain't getting off on that. No, not. But 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 just the fact that I turned it around. Yeah. To me, it's more so like, man, I can inspire the next nigga. It might be somebody that wanted to, like y'all said, want to kill themselves. Like nigga, I ain't never felt like that. They watching the show. So the right shit now. that I've been through, like I ain't never touched that type of level. It's somebody that wanted to give it all up for this shit. Right. But they able to see me right now and be like, what? Like hell no. And it could be bigger than me. Like I just said, like bro, like in the last six years, like I'm hundred million sold in ten billion streams. Mm. I don't even know, like, you know, like I'm so foot on the gas that I don't even know, like the plaque bigger than me. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just continuing to roll on and roll on and roll on. Like, even with me being Atlantic for four years, even my executive career, now being an Empire, look at the stuff that I did with Empire. When I left Atlantic, people thought that, man, like, I don't know if this going to keep continuing work because at Atlantic, I did A Boogie, look back at it, Meek Mill Dangerous. I did all these different records or whatever. And then I go from there to fucking um, Empire and shit. My first song was Baddest by Chris Brown. I mean by Young Blue featuring Chris Brown and Two Chains. One of the biggest radio records of the last 12 months is a reoccurring record. I don't know if y'all know, but you, you pray for your record to be called a reoccurring, reoccurring record. record. Yeah. So why they're not it, even trying to spend money on it, but it's going to keep it going. Going. It's it's going. Going. It's it's going. Going. No money being spent. No, it goes into ads. It's a reoccurring record. It goes into ads. Exactly. There's a list of records that radios just keep. Rotation. Then from there, I did yeah. I did all Tink Project. Tink Project about to she drop. Out right you know now. what I'm saying? She about to drop next week on the 19th. She's the biggest fucking independent female artist. Like she's getting more money and she's bigger than the biggest. You know what I'm saying? Right. She's from Chicago at too, right? Chicago. Then yeah. I was able to keep my hands in a bunch of different shit. I was able to collaborate and do the Fireboy record Peru with Ed Sharon and all this other stuff. Like, mm. bro, this shit is easy work. And not only that, I'm more excited than anything about Neek Bucks. He just got his new situation. We about to drop his project. Big Amazing. features. Two Chains, Wiz Khalifa, Tink, all these different people on my dog. Right. My dog from one block away from him. Right. And this nigga been working a long right. time. time. Right. I remember me and Clue did a slide yeah. mixtape on, on the app. On oh, yeah. um shit. And we featured yeah. him on that shit. Uh, yeah. When you know I met him, he was doing that the was... joint with Steve Stout. Yeah, yeah, How that yeah. work? Because he was just in the news. Who that, Steve? Yeah. Oh. You say he was taking all this money from the United Masters. Oh, no, no, no. I had a good time at United Masters. Oh, you ain't getting no money from <laughs> <to> the <take? laughs> no, That shit was... Let's not put that I out there. Made oh, no, it was yeah. out there. The story. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's out there. Like, it's out like there. he kept like 7 to 10 million or some shit Oof. like that. So you ain't getting... But get, listen, Stout is no, a I legend. Made money. They, don't, right. they can't pay the legends enough, okay? Got right. So even if he got 7 to 10 million, it wasn't going to go to somebody's budget that was going to make them a star. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't foresee him doing that, but he's going to... He's gonna. They're they going to carve their money out, my dude. Right. You got to understand. Nah, Nick, nah, Nick nah, nah, rap. Nah, Stephen, nah, I'm doing right by me. Nah, though. Nah, sure. big, is, right. big is not mic'd up. But I got to ask this question. Do you give any of this, like, credit it to God. Me? Yeah. No, my whole career is God based. Like, I mean, it's God at hard work. Like, if I didn't have God put God first or work hard, then I wouldn't really be on nothing. Mm. Like, for real, for real, you got to think about it like, shit, to make it through that, to make it through these type of adversities or whatever, to be on top right now, standing like, I don't know, like, like I'm, I ain't even trying to like, hold y'all up. Like, these niggas is not getting the type of you know what I'm saying? Right. Favorite. They don't have the type of God favor that God had on, has on my life right now. Like, and right. that's what people were jealous of. And maybe like if you a hater, like, cause I'm spreading all positive energy. Right. So if you sitting back and you watching and you have a any disdain on me, you just jealous of God's favor. It's God's hmm. favor they paying me seventy five thousand dollars a record. It's God's favor that I got 
a song deal with every major record company in the music business right now. It's God's favor. But I don't think that you get to God's favor without going through the, the trials and tribulations, my brother. And that's, 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 that's something you touched on earlier that I wanted to circle back on. You And you said it so smoothly, it, it came and went. But you alluded to the sacrifices that it took to get to where you yeah, are Yeah, for now. sure. And you said something real key. You said, I've sacrificed my whole life. I don't have a wife. I don't have kids. I don't have any of these other things that people build their lives around. I know plenty of people who go hard mm -hmm. when they get kids. That was, that was a turning point. They, mm -hmm. they got a kid. Now I got to go super hard. But you... Yo, I've sacrificed my whole... And there's so many people who are in this for the entertainment or in this for the fun, and in, in this, but you yeah. sacrifice all that stuff. And I don't think people Does understand Does that resonate it. with you? Because we, oh we both God. sacrifice. Like you wouldn't believe. And, that's, and that's every, story, every yeah, all of us. Every, every, no, no, no. Every, every, using condoms ain't a sacrifice. That's not what I'm talking about. What? <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. Sacrifice yeah, promotions, like, relationships. Like, no, 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 bro. No, 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 I get it. My family didn't like me doing this shit. No, there are people who dead ass don't. There are dead ass people who don't talk to me. There are people who yeah, are mad family. at me for shit that I tried to help them out with who are pissed at me. That's all of us. That's part of Fact. this game. Fact. Yo, That's no, part you of got, the music business. You gotta, you, gotta hear, you gotta hear where I'm coming okay, from. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. When I'm consulting and I'm talking to these kids and they're talking to me about all the things they want to do and I tell them, okay, if this is what you want, here's, the, here's what it's going to take. And they instantly look at me and say, nah, I don't take that. Why? Because they're on Instagram looking at somebody like Berg who's showing the highlights of his life and that's what they think it takes. And when he said, I've sacrificed my life to get to this point, that's the part they don't see. They see the highlights. Mm -hmm. And that, mean, that's what I'm trying to touch on now. What like, you about to say? What it takes I'm, is more than what some but, people are but, willing to but give up. But the doc is coming. Of course, yeah. But, but just because a man isn't married... I mean, just because a man is married or have kids don't mean he's not sacrificing his whole shit. No, I didn't like, say he that. Didn't, he didn't have time to do that. I got a daughter. I'm married. I sacrificed my whole life for this shit. My, my wife didn't meet me until later. A nigga tried to murder me in 2001. I survived. I had to learn to walk again. That was behind music, but you just nigga. Said, what did you say like, earlier? With your parents? My were, parents no, didn't want me to do none of this shit. That's a sacrifice. Shit. But all of, yeah, but all Your pops thought you was a drug a dealer, part, my nigga. Yo, 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 listen. My father thought I was drug dealing until Corona. Yeah. So look, let's this put This is real shit. Let's, let's, let's put a blanket statement yeah. on it. Like, when you really want this, like you really want it, sacrifices must be made. Yes. Right. My sacrifices might not be yours. Yours, exactly. And vice versa. Yeah. But you're going to sacrifice they, a they portion of your life. You're just going to yes. take something away from you. Right. Relationships. Or you money. Yeah. Where it's you something be. of high value. Exactly. Yeah, very high. Push. You have to be able to say, no, this is more the important. The only reason yeah. I say that for me is because mm -hmm. it's like, damn, like, I went through all that. Now I'm like an eight-figure nigga. And I don't, I don't got, like, how am I going to meet a girl? She got to meet me on an elevated level. Does she really fuck with me? Is she even, do she want to, you know what I'm saying? Right. Is this at it's a, a, lot a of ground questions. level that you want to have children with? It just come with so many different barriers would, of what's going on. Would you believe her if she said to you, I don't like, I don't like no, young fuck bird, no, I like but I'd rather, shit, her, yo, I, but I'd rather be an eight figure kid. nigga with, with, with having with these problems worries. than be a broke nigga, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like, I'm no, tell no, you, you made, you made the trade, you made the yo. sacrifice. The only thing I'm pointing out is mm -hmm. that part doesn't get high lit. Yeah. People don't see that part. And when I have to tell them that this is what it costs, they don't believe me. And it ain't you for saying them. That, I know that, but they don't want to hear me telling that. Because then, then a nigga like Math is calling me a dream killer. No, but but I look no, at the no, 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 one of us that walked this journey, real right. talk, none of us thought it was gonna be over fucking night, nigga. Niggas knew they was gonna have to put some fucking work in, they was gonna have to build, they was gonna have to do something, and then I'm gonna get my motherfucking I'm shine. I'm not talking about us. I'm not talking about us. You talking us. about the frontal lobe not yeah. developed, nigga? Listen, 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 Yo, but look, listen, check listen. this out. Let me say this, oh. though. This what the funniest thing is to, like, what people can see from this interview and, like, the whole trials and tribulations. This shit that happened to me, like going to the 
concentration camp in the school is more traumatic than even the, the foolery with the young bird. But just some moments in the beach. That shit was more traumatic than that little foolishness that happened. Do you think that you can never get to a point in where you can repair your relationship with your mother? Yeah, I'm working on that right now. That's the next chapter of my life. Good for you. What was it like? I gotta work on me first, though. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't take accountability for that. Right. Like, I'm fucked up. Like, I gotta step back from this shit. Like, I gotta step away. I gotta take three, two, three months away because it's just grind, 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 grind. That's why I'm looking forward to the rest of this year. Like, I done fucked this year up so much that I don't even gotta do another song for the rest of this year. Like, I'm already in 2023. Like, I'm already ahead of niggas, like, for real. So I wanna take the rest of this year off, yeah. damn near. I'm just bought me. After are you, you, are you gonna be able yep. to? <laughs> I just bought, yeah, of course. I just bought the big dumb house from scratch in Miami, nigga. Yeah. Like, I just want to take a, a few months off and really like tap in and, and smell some roses and so sit you, back. You know what I'm saying? You looking, I would love to, to do that. Where you looking to get to spiritually inside? What what you said? I'm fucked up. What are you looking to fix? It's I, obviously something that money can't buy. The fucked upness is just being so driven to where you had to block out everything, whether it was personal relationships, time, building with people. Because, you know, this music industry yeah. is one thing, but when, you know, it's all said and done, family is the most important. But that sounds like an asset. That's what be saying no, that all the no, time. No, people start to Id identify you as cold. Like, the way he said it just now, most people will tell you, you, you should be that way. This that, is the, that's how you so should people, be in order people, to be. People in your life won't feel like that. They're oh, not going to feel like that. They're but right now, like right now, math, in this situation that we're in, this is the first time I ever put myself first, nigga. Man. And, and I speak to the least amount of people ever in my life right now. Mm -hmm. It's only one motherfucker that gets a call from me guaranteed every day, and that's my moms and pops. And today I speak to them because we film it. Mm -hmm. So niggas got to understand now I'm not a manager no more. I'm, I'm in front of the camera. And no, I can't do all of that shit. I have to concentrate on my shit. I got to talk in the mirror and, 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 and fucking deal with stuttering. I, I, I got to do research. I got to go ride my bike, work out. Right. I got to do shit for me that's going to make me look better. And some people are going to go by the wayside naturally. The, you know uh, what I'm saying? The next chapter of my life is called Get Rich and Disappear. For anybody. That's the next album? Yeah. 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 I like that title. But like, my thing is like, man, I, I, I just want to put the next people on, man. Like, I don't even like, I don't even like, man, I never buy no plaques. I never do all that other shit or whatever. Like, I don't care about none of that shit, man. Like, like my dog getting on, like my dog seeing a different level of life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. people being able to influence people. Like, that's where I'm at with it right now. You know what I'm saying? Because you... You chase the money so long that when you finally get the bread, you actually sit back and be like, "This is crazy." This shit ain't even really like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, crazy. like it, it gives like, you freedom, but right. you know what I'm saying. But at the same token, like you it, free by yourself. How and, and you look lonely, lonely, yeah. lonely path, and it, and, and you're kind of disconnected from everybody that was close to you. And you got PTSD from all the other shit, from the things that are happening. So you pride, can't really. Yeah check in, you know what I'm saying, and really feel, open yourself up to be like. And the only thing that really brings you any type of, of joy is seeing other people go through their journey. Sure. Like, like how did you remain shit. the same dude? Because you, because, because, well, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you shrug your shoulders, right? But for me to have known you for 20 years mm -hmm. and not see you for a long time yeah. and see you, you're the same, same exact person. Person, how do you go through the trials and fucking tribulations and still remain with the same heart and 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 fervor for life and music? I've been me the whole time, man. I can't yeah. switch up now. Is that a good thing? Hell yeah. He's up. That's eight but, figures, but money ain't everything. Money ain't everything. Yeah, exactly. money ain't everything I mean, so I'm telling you, son. guys. I just want to say this because you said something, and if I don't comment on this. I'm going to be upset, and okay. I don't want to be upset tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please don't. People, I need y'all to understand. The favor from God is the breath that you breathe. We all have the equal favor from the Lord. What you do with that favor is on you. But as long as you breathe it, we all have that equal favor. Right. And the value of life is not money. It's not diamonds. It's not gold. I don't care what you hear. It is not that. It's salvation. That's a fact. I ain't yeah. mad at that. Yo, I, I love Bigger Ben, but that's my brother and I know him. And he likes money. He likes money. 
He likes money. But, 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 but don't man, get he it likes money. Don't nah, get it fucked up. There's, there's a six outside. Crazy. Guaranteed is with the run the flats. Six. The 750s outside. It's outside. It's outside. With the run flats. And, so anyway. and his wife gets moist when he looks at her like this. Look. <laughs> <laughs> trying. You know what I mean? Berg, like, what just that happened? Is. I missed that episode. Nah, nah. You missed that episode? All right. <laughs> he said, All right. For, for the people that do this, right. what are you using when you go in the studio? Um, well, in my earlier days, I started out programming like on FL and all that other stuff Fruity or whatever. Loops. Yeah, but mm -hmm. now like I have took it up to like a different level to where like I'm more so like, logic? nah, I don't, I don't program beats. I'm like Quincy Jones of this era, Pub gotcha. Daddy of this era. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I have a whole team that I've assembled or whatever that's like guys that I work with that I'm able to be a blessing into their life, like how they bless in my life to where I can point out the bounce and say, you know what? As far as like, like I really ushered in all this shit. Like you see how, like I went on a Breakfast Club like three years ago. I'm like, yo, I'm about to be the Puff Daddy of this generation. Watch, I'm about to flip every song that I grew up on on 106 and Park, and it's gonna be a motherfucking hit. And like I kind of ushered in like what's happening right More now. You sampling. can't go nowhere without niggas flipping a motherfucking song or whatever. So right. I ushered in that era, and then not only that, like man, like I'm just great at like putting the right people in the room and allowing my influence to bleed in through them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, me being so excited about something might bring the best out of somebody else to where it could be like, yo, um, I like this uh, Stevie Wonder loop. Let's do that. Let's get the um, EPMD only for a customer drums. Right. Let's put them under that. Right. And then let's put Fabulous on this record. Tink, right. this going to be so your you're song. you're not even touching the machines. I don't man. have to, no. Let me ask you this. It's two... Thoughts or theories. Mm -hmm. A hit record. Is it something that happens fast or something that gets cultivated over time? Because I've heard from Esso that it should take about 15 minutes sometimes. Bro, you know? I, ain't, I ain't worked on no song. Like, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. When it feel like work, I got to get the fuck there out. There you go. Yeah. I told you. I told you it happens fast. They, I, I don't disagree. The best sessions has been when niggas go in and they catch the vibe mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. turn around and you be like, yo, this shit done? That's the record right Because when Clark Kent said Hove came in and did the verse, it fucked Biggie's head up. Yeah. The, the clip that you just he put did it in 15 yeah. minutes. He said Hove walked in, did it, and Big was like, took him two months to figure two it out. Two months to write the record. Right. So hearing you, your mind is so programmed in an organic way. It's like, all right, drums here, Fab here, da da da. All right, guys, see you in two weeks. It's conditioning, though. It took years. Mm. There was a time when you sat in the studio and you was like, I need help. I didn't have a producer when right. I signed a DMX, so like I had to evolve into doing what I'm Went doing. Went back right now. to Chicago and looked up his old homeboy just to get a producer. Yeah. Yeah. That's how so humility is taught you this shit. Yeah, now my old homeboy, Boogs, is Kanye's right hand man. He's done every fucking song with Kanye. This nigga is one of the richest niggas, most revered niggas, Grammy winner, award mm. winner ever. Ever, nigga, ever. Me and him got plaques together currently today. Awesome. So we do you feel yeah. like he taught Fine. you how to produce? Yeah. A thousand percent. I say the only thing about this whole story, I can't wait to see the doc when it comes out. The only thing about your story that makes me shake my head in any way what? is I hope what people take away from you is the perseverance, mm -hmm. the drive, but my pet peeve when it comes to artists is self-inflicted issues. Mm -hmm. And your story is loaded with self-inflicted yeah. issues. Like yeah. from start to whatever. Yeah. All self-inflicted things. And I hope, no, I hope, please, if you're watching, don't take that part away from, don't put, nah, don't jam yourself Hell no, nah, but. Th please th don't. Th we tell this story to provide insight for people because there was no internet when all this shit was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was before all this other stuff or whatever. So everything that niggas seen through my journey, that's why I said it's a testimony. So if you able to watch this and you able to gain some knowledge from this and you going to spend a little two hours that we just sat here doing it yeah. and you won't fuck up and bump your head, like you got, you have a blueprint around you guys, right. you know what I'm saying, to be able to learn from, Look, you know? You, you got to learn from other people's mistakes because you don't live long enough to make them all right. yourself. I mean, yeah. speaking Take of living in. long, like what was... Did you get a chance to link up with X before he passed away? What did yeah, that yeah. do to you mentally? When, yeah. Because that affect, like, your relationship That affected with, the world. Because yeah. you was little dog. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> uh, fucking, um, man, I think it was right before he passed. Like, he exit, like, well, one, I seen exit the mall and um, in LA at Topanga Mall when I was um, out there, and he was just like, we just embraced or whatever. Then I was, from there, he just had my number. 
And the nigga just hit me random, like, yo, 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 where you at? I'm in Atlanta. I need a studio. I'm like, he said, uh, I'm going to put you with DJ Drama, get you in Mean Streets. So I was able to get him in there. Then from there, I came to Atlanta, and we linked up actually at a at Tip Studio. And yeah. um, we went in, and we made some records. I got unreleased records with DMX right now. That's wow. like present right before he passed. Wow. And um, shout out to Tashira and his family. Like They figuring out what they want to do with him. You know, but the songs is done. And it was, it was a full circle moment. And he was really, 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 really proud of me. And I was just so taken back by that because it's kind of like, damn, like full circle moment. Mm -hmm. Like I'm Iceberg and now you pulling up on me to get a record from me. Yeah. From Hitmaker. Yeah. Incredible. Student mm -hmm. becomes a master. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got yeah. songs with DMX's Iceberg where I'm rapping on I, it. I, I got songs with DMX's Hitmaker, DMX Hitmaker Jeez, where I produce yeah. them. What happened to the puppy? Man, I got that dog away, man. I'm gonna fuck <laughs> 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 I'm fucking going crazy. Oh, man. man. Well, what's, what's the thing you know selling your cow to cow? Yeah, we're selling the catalog, like what goes into that? How do you how do you depict the value of it? Um, you just negotiate. You know what I'm saying? It ain't really like you. You know what I'm saying? It's business, so it ain't like what I see for myself in business might not be for the next man to see. But you negotiate and you come to a a happy medium where y'all can meet in the terms, and then shit, you That's execute the deal. That. Because you get your royalties, so you know what you're making. And I only you know saw what the you're portion. getting. Yeah, I saw the portion. Yeah, and, then, the, and, then, and then it's over okay. amount of years. This is what right. I'm actually gonna make. So y'all niggas need to pay me this. And then they'll come back and be like, well, we're not gonna make money off of that. I think they do it at a multitude of like, depending on how you do your deals. So like, say like, I'm just speaking fic fictitiously or whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't know say for somebody mm -hmm. else, not me personally, but say like somebody say somebody's a producer, one of your homies, and um they last publisher, they, the last rope go round, they might have got a million dollars for they, you know what I'm saying, publishing deal. And then I think they pay you at like a multitude of like 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it might be 10 million. But you only sold a portion. Yeah. And you still make new shit. This is the Over beginning time. of my career. I'm just pressing a reset button right now. That's why so many people sell their catalogs because they're still making music. So you can have that old shit because I got more shit that's going out on the net. I'm going to shoot. I got it on YouTube. I'm monetizing the YouTube mm -hmm. now, too. So they can just recycle more and more and more shit. It's a, to me, it's a smart play, but everybody wants these young black people to keep their but masters but look, and all but that. But say your publishing deal, you got 3.5 million. And then somebody say, man, I'm going to drop 30, 40, 40 M's on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peace. Transition to your next career. Go get you some real estate, Jack. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and they keeping that go, for their family. And then do music when you want to. Right. See, here's the funny part. We just got finished talking to Royce, and Royce's whole thing was ownership. Like always different mindset. It's a it's a it's a different mindset. Uh, so, nobody and, and nobody he, ain't coming. He want to own this shit so we can sell it. Well, and well, yeah, everybody yeah, want to own people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 there's one person in the whole world that does not create a business and start it and own it to not sell it. Right. No. 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 I'm telling you, that's that. smart people that do that. Oh, okay. But there are some people that own a business and treat it like their baby, my like nigga, and don't want to sell it. Because I've come to them and been like, sell it. I'm not attached to none of this shit. I, I created to sell it and I'm confident in my talent yeah. that I'm gonna do this shit again Bro, with, the, make, with a bag. If I make apple bottom jeans, nigga, it's gonna be cherry bottoms the next nigga. Like, we gonna <laughs> flip this shit and get the fuck out of here. Man, we gonna keep like, doing it. And I'm gonna keep doing it because y'all fuck with me. I'm gonna keep bringing the bag. As long as y'all fuck with Mav, as long as y'all fuck with us, we can keep doing this shit again if we keep our mind on the Or prize. not Stay even focused. us. As long as you fuck with them, the next person you put on. Got you. That's right. your knowledge that you put into that person or whatever for them to bust the next deal. And shit, you get 20% of 20 million, nigga, off of you putting somebody else on, nigga, you get the lay back. Smooth word. Right. That's love. Yo. I want to say shout out to my man, King John. He in the building. He's a producer. He's on, sure. a, on a rise. He's worked with Fabio. He's worked with... Yeah, he got uh, his catalog here. Yeah. Say um, less. I, I like to, to kind of like join the generations and like, yeah. have people sit around, gather the knowledge. I know y'all watching and y'all be like, yo, I learned so much watching this show and it's entertaining. Yeah, it's the best show on earth, motherfucker. <laughs> yo, <laughs> sure. 
you know, you know, I gotta ask because when I met him, oh lord, the first time I met him, go ahead. We got a couple more controversial. Oh, no, 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 no. I gotta get the fuck up. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this a smooth question. It's, it's yeah. real cupcake. Uh -huh. Top five cities with the prettiest women you enjoyed running through. That is light from him. I'm actually is proud Toronto of you. up there? Toronto is number one for me. Is Toronto up there? Terms. I'll say Toronto, Houston. 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 I'm Los I'm Angeles, saying. Miami. Yep. And New York. That's New York. The, and then if you like flavor, like if you like one of them niggas that want a Cape Verdean joint or whatever, you want to go up there and find you a little joint in yeah. Rhode Island. Boston. 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 Yeah. So you left Atlanta out of that completely. I noticed. That. I think that Atlanta is just a mixture of all those cities coming to one because yeah. everybody just migrates to Atlanta. So I wouldn't say that it you was. Got, you got like Queens and Brooklyn, you know what I'm like, yeah. California yeah. and Atlanta. You got a lot in Atlanta. Yeah, you, I, got, you got third generation strippers in Atlanta. <laughs> third, because Berg done, you know, got so many famous Crazy. dudes, baby mothers that is on his resume from back oh, in the day. Oh man, I'm not doing that no more. this show is coming yeah, to yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been Yo. real. Again. I commend you, sir. Yo, thank you. Respect. Thank you for sharing your story. We'll be looking forward to the doc. We'll be looking forward to the neat. Nick is on his way up. New Nick, quiet over here. Yeah, 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 we dropping. Yeah, we dropping. So we should be dropping like next month. Shit, crazy. The These Harlem right niggas, right niggas is too cool for yeah. niggas. I keep <laughs> you know Harlem yeah. niggas is cool, bro. Shout out to Wagner. <laughs> um, shout out to Junior Reed. Shout out to everybody that's been watching. Back. Take these stories in the mind and understand. Like, there's nothing. Nothing's easy that's worth doing. Mm. And to get to the biggest situations, you got to take the biggest risk. And we gonna come back and do part two, cause it's a like we we kind of stopped it like at the beginning of hit maker or whatever. Like we gotta tell the whole. There, there gotta be something in the doc. We can't you can't give a. Hey. Yeah, you right, you right, you, know you right. Man? You know what I'm saying? Why but did I, you stop him from nah, telling us? I wanna <laughs> I, I wanna come. I, I'm gonna come back, but next Let's time we gonna let we gonna let Nick do the talk, and I'm gonna sit right there and I'm gonna splash. You know what I'm saying? I'm I like that. that. I, I like wanna get that. his I like whole that. life story. I like that. I need idea. that whole vibe for real, for real. That's dope. No, let's do it. That's dope. Appreciate y'all. Part two on the way. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.